wish. Yo. <laughs> what up? It worked. Yo, the most highly produced uh, stream that you've had to date. <laughs> Being forced to screen share an old stream yeah, well, to get an intro before knows. it cut off. Now everyone knows, dude. They didn't have to know. They couldn't figure it out before you said it. Yeah, they needed know, it. like a title in the top it. left corner, but just Ryan Damn and it. Ryan. So we're back. Mm -hmm. We're back. And uh, everyone thinks that this is a continuous thing. So right off the bat, I'm going to tell you guys, this is just a one-time thing. We're just doing this at the end for the Acolyte. And then, I don't know, probably Skeleton Crew. Whenever that it's like out. a holiday special. Just think of it that way. Yeah, everyone loves those. Yeah, makes it more special. The holiday is the Acolyte is over. And so that that's so, the celebration. What? Well, yeah, but now she's doing all these interviews and it's like <laughs> getting even worse. Everyone she gives makes everything worse. Like, dude, it's great. Great content. But, My favorite uh, one was the soul is benignly sexist. Uh, which is why it was okay for Osha to kill him. He can't even that. die without being sexist. Yeah. I saw your video last night, dude, and I um I was like, should I make a video on this? I'll do it tomorrow. I don't want to fuck up my sleep over this shit. Yeah, yeah. It's not like it's time sensitive or anything. Shitting no. on the acolytes going to be a thing that happens for the next few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it's just wild that she's just coming up with more shit as she's getting interviewed. And now, like, uh, go ahead and explain this benign sexism thing. Oh, I, yeah. I, I mean, Leslie Headland did an interview with Collider, and the person from Collider was like, I don't know if this was just me, but I really felt like Soul was very much taking away May's agency, even when she's trying to kill him. He tries to tell her that it's okay. And I just felt like even then he couldn't stop pushing against her boundaries, something like that. And Leslie's like, yes, Queen, I know. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what we were going for. There's a thing called benign sexism where kind of parental father figures think that <laughs> they know best for their daughters and try to tell them what to do and how to do it. And it was eventually time for every daughter. You have to break away from that. And that's really what we were going for. That's paraphrasing in yeah. my Leslie Headland voice because yeah. it was a written article. But that's basically <laughs> what she was saying. Literally, uh, Can you say daddy issues? Holy fuck. Every single one of these people in the writer's room. This this series was an example of what happens when you think people who, one, aren't good at their jobs and don't know anything about the source material, but they want to turn that thing into something that they've always wanted to see. So you have a lot of lonely fucking women, probably that have really bad relationships with their fathers. Most of them are probably lesbians. They wanted to create a series in order to represent them. They are the lesbian witch coven. They are the ones that just want to be alone by themselves and raise children the way they want to and live their lifestyle free of judgment. And the Jedi, they're the patriarchal, white, cis, heteronormative society that continues to tell them you're not allowed to do that. That's why you're supposed to root against the Jedi because they're a representation of society and the patriarchy. And the lesbian witch coven is a representation of modern day feminists. Like that's really what this is all about. And that's why at the end of the day, when you set out to write a show and that's your main goal, you end up with a pile of shit. Yeah. And what was weird was that even, she was like, she couldn't even kill him and get the satisfaction. He had to give her confirmation that it's okay to kill him. I was like, Damn, so even like <laughs> even him allowing her to kill him, he's still at fault. Okay then. Nice. And I'm sure he would agree with that if that scene if she stopped killing him and went, Hey, stop saying it's okay, he'd be like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said it's okay. Literally. It's not <laughs> Literally. It's, it's not okay at all. Carry on. Yeah, he should have been like, nah, you know what? it's you're right, it's not okay. Gets up, just turns Sith eyes, just kills everyone. That would have been dope. That would have been the good ending. Plagueis shows up. No, time to show you my real master. Yeah, like the there's also a different mm. article of her talking about how Osha went on a positive corruption arc. So like once well, again reiterating that this is like a good thing. This is a thing that you should be rooting for. For them to get together both romantically and in this quasi master apprentice relationship. It is positive corruption of Osha. This is something that you should have wanted to happen to reject the Jedi order. Yeah, I think this is probably the worst show that they've ever made. Yes. It's very bad. I was actually surprised a little bit. I didn't think it would get as bad as it did. I remember, Ryan, you told me explicitly it would go that way, and I was like, hmm, we'll see. Like, I I knew it was going to be like heavy-handed with different messaging and stuff like that, 
But even I, who had the least hope for any of this possible, even I didn't think that it would just be so incompetent in every single aspect. Every single aspect of just, like, traditional storytelling. Uh, whether it's uh, character interactions, whether it's dialogue that is just people telling each other the same things they already fucking know to begin with. Um, whether it's no concept of time or space or meaningful distance. It wouldn't have mattered if this entire show took place on Coruscant like just on the other side of the planet because how yeah. quickly they all got from one place to another. Yeah. Um, Dude, I, I bet you it would take longer for them to get to the other side of Carson than it would to get to the other side of the galaxy, like oh, in 100%. universe. They wouldn't even realize. They'd be like, oh, we got to take the fucking space taxi and that's going to take a whole day to get to the other side. Well, you yeah. know, Master, I had to find one with an open cockpit and <laughs> you know, find the yeah. color I like. And, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Another thing so. they fucked up they don't usually is uh, so many people with bad performances. You have the main character playing two different characters that both have dull as fuck expressions. You want them, you want them doing all kinds of emotional states, and the best she could pull off is uh, awkwardly yelling. Dude, I mean, when she was actually... forced choking him, man, that that image has gone around the internet of just there's no expression. Did they not tell her? Well, she did anyone never, let her never know? get wrinkles ever because she just never has any sort of facial expression whatsoever. Oof. They should have told her to pretend he was a white dude. That probably would have got some real anger out of her. Probably. Like, this we'll tell her she dances YouTuber. like a white person. That would really piss her off. Oh, God. Dance like a half-white person. <laughs> that would piss her off even more. She'd be like, excuse me. You'd be like, what? I didn't, this, yeah. Nothing I said was it. I didn't say anything. Another yeah, so pair of daddy let's, issues, the manless Stenberg. Let's get into the nitty gritties. We're, we're going to get into the key jang jangling. We're going get to get into the whole show and premise and how season two is probably do you think season two is gonna happen <laughs> i'm very 50 50 on it and ryan had like an aneurysm wait like i'm i'm very 50 50 on it because there no one in their right mind should ever give this with the money they spent on it with the return they got literally falling off the charts entirely and it's like yeah. third or fourth week yeah. embarrassingly low ratings no one in their right mind should ever renew this but this is Disney Star Wars. This is Lucasfilm. Uh, they've showed interest in doing things that are not in their best interest plenty of times. So I honestly put it at 50-50 whether this thing actually gets a renewal or not. In that case, we see a Plagueis Heavy <laughs> Season 2, apparently. Yeah, yeah. dude, I want to get your thoughts on because I've never actually really asked you because we were on the other shows, but it's not like super lore sensitive. So what do you think about Plagueis coming into this freaking timeline and all of this and and for the chat who doesn't know, like Ryan is literally a lore master. I, I don't, I haven't met anyone who knows more about lore than Ryan. Well, I appreciate that, but um, it, it's it's fucking retarded for them to bring in it, bring him in. I think in the way that they did it, um, because you could just very easily have not had that happen and leave it very much a mystery as to what the current status is. They wanted to do it to generate excitement, to generate conversation. Um, at this point in the timeline, uh, the like Plagueis, all that stuff kind of doesn't matter anymore. As we've seen with Caddy Mundi, as we've seen with the introduction of Plagueis, they don't care what was established before. They'll use characters, but they'll fucking change their ages, they'll change the dates, they'll change all this shit. At this point in time, realistically, we should be seeing uh, like Tenebris and Plagueis. Um, it would have been close to the start of their master apprentice relationship. The birthday on Plague is a little funny because they've got a ten of a short story that has a line in there that's made people question it, blah, blah, blah. But um, there's a line in the Plagueis novel where Plagueis is maybe talking to Palpatine and kind of reminiscing about his training in the dark side. And like he thinks to himself, like, I trained with Tenebris in the dark side for longer than most beings in the galaxy's lifespan. Right, so you're talking like seventy or eighty years, maybe that that Plagueis and Tenebris trained together as master and apprentice. It's a long fucking time, so certainly we shouldn't necessarily see him being Chimere's master in this time frame. But none of it matters. They fucking erased it all. So to even break it down like that, we can talk about how they're changing things. But at the end of the day, they have full reign to do whatever they want, and they're willing to do whatever they want. Um. I uh, think if she plays into the whole, um, you know, the other acolytes that were in the galaxy that Plagueis had an eye on that were using the Force. 
Yeah. And again, I, I have no idea what the actual plan or what they want to do with that is. And does, does Chimere know that Plagueis is watching him? Um, Probably not, dude. It, you know what I mean? Like, so that would not be out of the realm of... The Go ahead. Is he actually just hiding in the cave? Surely it sends him, right? No one senses anyone in this thing. <laughs> Um, Except like, for fucking Vernestra and uh, yeah. Chimere. Yeah, his he helmet's off. Takes off his Cortosis helmet. She's like, you, the one I whipped in my BDSM dungeon with my light whip. Um, and I wonder if he ran away. Maybe that's what's actually going on there. Maybe they had a fucking sexual relationship that went bad. And that's why Vernestra doesn't want to tell anybody about it. Could you imagine, dude? Mm. No. Surprised. Jesus. No, I wouldn't be surprised because everything in the show is sexual anyways. There's dozens of Acolyte fans out there that could imagine that with Chimere. Yeah, yeah probably. Well, whatever. Anyways. Um, what, so did you, did you ever see my video or the article on her explaining Yoda and how Yoda is complicit and knows about all this shit? And she's like, oh, yeah, during the Clone Wars, he kept all... You don't know about this? I saw the, I don't know if I saw your video. I saw an article, something about it, but I, I don't know the full details of that interview. Essentially, Yoda is complicit to all of the deaths and everything going on. And the reason that she came up with this is because he kept something secret during the Clone Wars, I think season five, where uh, Yoda. When he goes knows. on his, uh, I don't know if it's five or six, with the lost episodes, right? Yeah. Where he goes on his Qui Gon thing and Darth Bane, Corban, all that stuff. Well, more of it. No, no, it was like it was like no. She said um, where he knew. Oh, fuck, I forgot. Chat, help me out here. It was like uh, where he knows something about the clones. Who made the clones? Oh, like he he knows that it wasn't fucking like Master Sifidius or whatever. That there's something else going on. Yeah. I, like, oh, that'd be fun to play with because he's already keeping secrets. The, the thing is, I I do think that by showing this, who knows what Vernestra said? Did she lie to Yoda? Did she tell him the truth? Does Yoda want to like keep it from everybody too? Who fucking knows? Either way, to me, it is damaging inherently to Yoda's character. Of course. Um, now Dude, I, it destroys his ass. Like, now, it makes no sense. Yoda's not perfect by any means, you know. Yoda, like. Y Yoda fails at sensing kind of what's going on and who's manipulating things literally right in front of his face in the same office as Palpatine, right? And he, he does fail in a lot of ways to sense a lot of things. So it's not like he's a perfect character by any stretch of the imagination. No. But um, I feel like to actively... It's, it's different from somebody making mistakes or being incompetent in some way or not seeing this or not envisioning this happening versus actively covering things up that then lead to damage. You know? I mean, what's the motive to cover it up? Well, there shouldn't be. He He's the freaking Jedi Grandmaster. He should know everything and shouldn't be hiding this shit. It's like, how does she even go ahead and make this show a thing? Who it's signed so funny, off like, this? Well, they Pablo? tell us of Vanestra. Her whole motive was she did the opposite of what she should have done, depending on her motive. She couldn't have made the Jedi look more guilty by saying yeah. they essentially trained one up that betrayed everybody. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, well, like, you know, we, we the, the investigation lot. is going to happen. And then she's like, oh, gosh darn it. And it's like, what did you expect? You just told them that Soul kept a secret for 16 years that involves, like, the murder of several people. And he's murdered even more to keep it a secret. It's like, yeah, you, you do need an internal investigation at that point. So that, uh, like, you, we talked a lot about that, obviously, as this series was going on, was the entire idea of the, them trying to cover everything up is retarded. Yes, we understand the Senate wants to put extra eyes on the Jedi. They want to maybe put more powers on them, whatever. But how is the, the final solution that she presents? By the way, a Jedi went fucking crazy and killed a bunch of other Jedi. But don't worry, he's dead now uh, in a ritual suicide or some shit. Uh, Autoerotic asphyxi asphyxiation. Maybe that's what they think happened to Saul. Um, how is telling the Senate that worse or better than admitting to them by the way, there's some crazy fucking dark forces that are out there that have the capability to just murk Jedi. Uh, we really need to get a handle on what's going on. That might get them extra resources. Might they get a little flack? Maybe. But probably not as much as blaming it on an active Jedi who had a role as a master at the time. 
It's unreal to me because how could she not expect an investigation? You'd be like, what happened? If you tried to describe what happened this season and what happened 16 years ago to any investigative body, and you just go, oh, you don't need to do an investigation. Sol acted alone. He was crazy. You'd be like, yeah, that's great. We're going to go talk to everyone involved, which if they do, by the way, think of all of the um, eyewitnesses across all the planets they went on. Think of all the things they would have to say. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it was just one flawed man. I see chat saying that my mic is low. I just checked. It seems fine. Do I sound okay to you guys? It was a little low. It sounds a little better now, though. I'm yelling. Sure, yeah. There's uh, some background noise from someone, either Maul or Orion. Or maybe, I don't think it's me because it's coming in my head. Background but, noise. Like, like, a, like a fan. It's probably me. Is it terrible? They don't have air conditioning in his land, so they have to fucking just blast fans when it gets Listen, over like I, 80 degrees Fahrenheit or I else it's the end of the world there. to be melting and sweating while you're doing the show, okay? Ryan is correct, by the way. That is exactly why that is happening. Yes. What What Ryan say? There's no air conditioning in his land? Yeah, Europe doesn't do that. <laughs> yeah. A lot of Europe, anyway. UK specifically, because you know 99% of our days are just damp. Yeah, what's with that? Why don't you guys have any air conditioning anywhere? Everyone's just sweaty. It would just be seen as like a waste of money because most days we don't need it. Yeah. Fair enough. For the, for the same reason that like houses in San Diego, California aren't necessarily built to be weatherized for winter and shit, you know? Right. On the occasion that it does get like unnaturally cold, people are like, oh my god, what the fuck is going on? But, you know, 98% of the time you don't need it. Well, that's why you see people like as when we have a slightly hot day, they get frazzled and they go fully red over uh, in Britain. They have to run inside in fear for the sun. Yeah, it was like a, a Not... fucking. It was like two months ago. They're like a historic deadly heat wave, <laughs> maybe passing through the UK, and people like did the did the math. They're like, it's seventy seven degrees outside. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You Listen, guys are British die. people are built like ghosts. The sun will just <laughs> go straight through them. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really actually that cold over there? You guys don't get sun? It's not. It's it's mild and damp and uh, overcast. That's like our constant weather. The funny thing is, I kind of like it. <laughs> it's, it's very chill. I uh, enjoy the atmosphere. Ah. All mm -hmm. the time? Pretty well. Like you know, a lot too? of the time you get like a clear sky, but it's a very mild. Mild is what we get most of the time. There's just no weather events here, and we're not on like a, a, a what was it fault line or whatever. It, nothing, nothing significant happens weather-wise. No fault lines. Uh, what's the What's the word I'm looking for? The thing that makes are, it so that you get are earthquakes like a uh, bunch of like vampires or weather impacting. Is that, is that what you're saying? Oh well, weather event. I don't know what the fuck they're considered. Climate event events of which. Crazy shit happens, earthquakes or tornadoes or whatever I would the fuck. Consider an earthquake a geological event. There you go. More so than weather. But yeah. I'm not I'm not a weather person, okay? I don't know how any of it works. We don't we have literally like never had an earthquake, not even a mild one. It's as chemical. far as I'm aware. It's all based oh, on that's chemicals. Good. That's good. But like, like no hurricanes, you know. no tsunamis, no what are the other ones? No like lightning storms that go crazy or anything. Just it's all stabbings. very boring here, weather-wise, but that's just, kind of a good just thing. Just stabbings and, and watch thieves. Watch Pretty thieves. much. London. Yeah, they take your watches. <laughs> that's all I hear from people from the UK. Don't go to the UK. <laughs> Don't wear a watch. Oh, okay. It's all right. It's all right sometimes right. the sun comes watch, out maybe. and sometimes we get snow, but not often. Yeah. Anyways. Um... I'm tired of talking about this shitty show, man. <laughs> we just stopped. <laughs> like, like 10 that minutes was a in. <laughs> bad plan to do this stream then. Yeah. Like 20 minutes. Uh, well, we like exhausted ourselves on on freaking Drinker Stream and Gary's. Well, it's like, well, so what's going on with you guys? What, what's new? Here's a question for the three of us to catch up on. The man of the hour, Mr. Dave Filoni. How are we feeling on him and his relation yeah. to this show? Say my trust in him is shaken. <laughs> yeah, he, he's signed off on all of this. Um, doesn't mean he's the architect behind it. I'll even I'll give him that. I'm not going to put that on him. But he's signed off on all this shit, including all the stuff that 
threw a threw a wrench into what we had previously thought was kind of established or whatever. Um, he signed off on having this virgins in the force, on having these lesbian space witches create life. He signed off on fucking plague has seen all this happen and maybe even getting the idea from that. Like Dave Filoni is who I've always said he was. Um, so like it's not surprising to me at all, but I Only. fucking love that more awareness is being brought to the Dave Filoni problem. Yeah, it's it. Fuck. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what to say because it's like he was kind of my last line of hope, and uh, I don't know, man. It sucks because I didn't really have anyone else to kind of lean on. Be like, okay, we still got Dave. He's the head of everything. But now it's like I hear Pablo is signing off on shit, and and I don't I don't know, man. I don't. Yeah, I mean, this passed through the whole crew, right? It went from Leslie to Pablo to Dave to Kathleen, probably the whole set. Well, first, it. Leslie was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, D all this passed through Dave, blah, blah, blah. And then and then she switches up in another interview and she's like, well, all this actually went through Pablo. And it's like, so what, like, who the fuck is to blame here? I, I, mean, I think it's like the scripts, different. The scripts go through Dave and the law checks go through Pablo. That's what I got the impression of. Yeah, I think she's talking to both of those people. Um, and there's probably way more than just that as well. Um, but yeah, this is Dave Filoni's fucking honest, like, role. It, script checking you know even if dialogue will building blah blah like when you go through that he's gonna see all the shit that's in the show and he's gonna right. be like for all we know it was much worse and he made it better <laughs> yeah for all I'm we sure know happened. what i'm um, saying of course though is we ended up with this so yeah like, i just wonder at what at what line can dave be like this is shit don't <laughs> make this or does that go to Kathleen Kennedy and she's like no we're doing this and he's like okay how do we make this better I, if so I, I'm I don't think Kathleen Kennedy has fucking any sign off on like bottom line like sees like final draft of this script or that I think Kathleen Kennedy gets pitches for things or she goes out and seeks out people for something they want to make decides who to hire and then fucking says all right go out and make this right now, if at some point in time they see a screener or something kind of like what happened with solo and they're like this is fucking bad. We have to stop this. Fire you. Hire someone else. Let them try to fix this. But right. the idea, I've always pushed back on these people that had the idea that Kathleen Kennedy is sitting there, you know, redlining out scripts and being like, you know, yeah. actually, this is in the outer rim, not the mid rim. Uh, we need <laughs> to fix it. You know, like, that's not her role at Lucasfilm. Her role yeah, is to put yeah. projects in place, hire people to make these projects with an overall, like, narrative in mind of what happens and what this show is supposed to be about. And then let the actual people that create those things there's, create. The kind of involvement she probably has on top of what you just said is uh, there's a clip. I, I don't have it on me or anything, but it's where they're doing like concept art for TFA and she's looking at a bunch of shit and she sees Phasma and she's like, that's got to be in there. Got to put that in there. Like that's the kind of creative involvement where it's not, you know, it's make sure story beats reach this sort of shit. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, that's, that's Star Wars. Do that. Do that Star Wars. But the thing with Dave Filoni is, um, you know, we'll never know definitively just how much of this belongs to him. But if his role allows shit like this to happen, then what is the point of him? Like, yeah. what, why why have him there at all if he's not going to be able to veto projects as bad as this one? This is literally like the highest power in terms of like creative control at Lucasfilm, right? Because Kathleen Kennedy's role is not like, like I said, it's not super in depth on like the creative side of things. It is more like an administrator of shit. Um, like whoever takes on that role next is not going to necessarily be in the fucking weeds when it comes to all these projects. Same way Dave Filoni is supposed to be in the weeds with all these projects. And personally, looking at something like Ahsoka, I think you're talking about like one standard deviation worse for the Acolyte than the Ahsoka show was, because I think the Ahsoka show is horrific as well. Mm. Um, like, in a lot of the same ways. It's not as bad, but there's problems in nearly every aspect of the Ahsoka series, from the writing to the character motivations to conversations that they're having between each other to things yeah. that just, quite frankly, don't make sense in the universe. Um, so, like, it's not shocking that Dave Filoni signed off on any of this. Yeah, it's a tough pill to swallow for me. I just it it leaves me kind of like now I'm I'm really well, I guess in the same boat you guys have always been where I'm just like okay well there is when's it gonna get better 
You know, and that so it's like, do is John Favreau the guy? I don't know. <laughs> what happened with Mando? What happened with Boba? I don't know. Is someone there like just changing a whole bunch of shit around? Um, I mean, you know, Man- Mando and Grogu. If that's awful, I assume your faith in that whole project will be in the dumpster, sort of thing. Yeah, I, I really liked Mando. I really liked it. Season one and season two. Season three was shit. Yeah, see, I think that season one had massive problems, but was like okay. Like it was kind of mid. Like it was like okay, I, I we'll see what can happen with it. Season two, I thought was a mess because really? I just didn't think structurally, story wise, there was really much meat to the bone, and instead it was just used as a vehicle for cameo after cameo. Yeah, well, I mean, here's the question, control. right? In retrospect, what is the story of Mando season two? Um, yeah. meeting. Boba Fett and getting Luke back. That's like my immediate <laughs> thoughts. Well, you missed a couple. Meeting Boba Fett, meeting Ahsoka, meeting Bo Katan, meeting Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. That I mean, is the yeah. point of season two, you know? And the the only thing you can say about it was hey, you kind of have this uh this moment which you already had in season one where he decides that he's going to rescue the child but you have this moment of hey this kind of like quasi father or son relationship or whatever and him willing to give that up um to let luke take him away that immediately gets erased in three fucking minutes in book of boba fett so that's meaningless like in retrospect like to go back now and watch mando season two it's it's fucking pointless remember the um the intrigue they try to generate with um what's her name lady with the green swords shit remember the spear oh, the, um, the spear um the witch yeah uh, yeah she yeah. elsbeth elsbeth yeah she, she she drops the throne shit right like yes. uh, uh, and it's like ooh what's that right. going to lead to it's like that led to Ahsoka season 1 which holy fuck you know yeah i i described mando season 2 as the force awakens of like disney plus streaming series because to me, I thought it was hollow and shallow and pointless and just jangling keys. But because people do care a lot about some of these characters, including Luke Skywalker, people went nuts for it when I don't think the substance was actually there. And looking back at that now, I feel like it is actually viewed a lot in the same way that Force Awakens was viewed a couple of years after. Right, when things kind of settle, <clears throat> the rose-tinted glasses come off and then they... Realize that this is not really mm. exactly as amazing as they thought. Somewhat, but Mando season one is pretty well like regarded, and season two is less regarded, but still people are surprised to hear that there'd be criticism of it compared to three, which everybody agrees is terrible. Yeah, at this point. I haven't heard one person praise three. Mm. Unfortunately. I mean, it's funny. The first thing I think about is, you know, Gus Fring coming back and doing his... He does the same thing every single season finale. It's embarrassing. Oh, God. Yeah. He's, he's not he's even got like, a character. He's just... He's, I'm he's bad. Not, yeah. 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 Like, let's just move on. And you then the, the Jack Black Lizzo stuff. The... um, Remember the Christopher... L- that actually really like pissed me off. You could see it in the coverage we did on EFAB when Christopher Lloyd briefly talks about the separatists. I was sitting there like, man, it's just a joke to you fucking writers, but I'm like sitting here desperate to learn more about the separatists. Yeah. And the recovery of like the remnants of any kind of forces like that. But never mind. Just just have him get zapped and fall over. It was really interesting actually to hear him talk. And then he Yeah. Yeah. It would it would be nice to have an actual uh, like a little bit more. I don't know. I want. I don't want to say adult themed show, but a little bit more mature shows like talking about some of the political ramifications and intrigue between the Republic and the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Yeah, you know, it's well, dude, we do get the, a um... lot in TCW, but again, that is it's TCW. I don't think it's made it's made for a in general younger audience. A lot of other people fell in love with it, but to me there's not as much meat on that bone as there's the potential to tell with those stories. Having decommissioned super battle droids that actually do retain some of their programming. That's already a fascinating concept that we could do so much with, and it's just a joke in that episode. That is the same yeah. joke that Jack Black and Lizzo are in. It that, really that was the me. episode with that red button where they're like, hey, don't touch that big fucking comically <laughs> large red button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, everything's just becoming a joke. Nothing's yeah. serious anymore, and they're hiring all these random directors or writers to get in there and you know put Star Wars on the resume, and it it's wrong. They just well, we talked be about it, right? Didn't kinds of fucking people. Didn't John Favreau put Lizzo in as a, a whim because his daughter wanted it or something like that? Yes, that was a John Favreau decision. Yeah, nobody else. That ain't well, sorry. That John ain't Favreau's Star Wars well at all, right? Like. You could say that the only reason we had Samuel Jackson in the prequels is because George Lucas fucking loved him in whatever movie he saw him in, but he still incorporated Mace Windu. He didn't just throw him in as, look, it's Samuel Jackson, lol. Yeah. He didn't, like, put a wig on him and call him Julius. Well, there's people I remember at the time saying, man, you bring in Samuel Jackson, you make him play a reserved, almost like a muted version of, he's like a character actor that always plays more, you know, electric and alive characters. It's like, well... Yeah, <laughs> it's like that's different than what you usually get from him, I suppose. There's, there's an element of that. The thing is, everyone likes Mace Windu. I think so. Here's what I think the problem is at Lucasfilm. I think everyone is just too afraid to offend each other, so no one just speaks up. You should be like, no, this is this idea is shit. What is this? What the fuck is this? This is garbage. Change it. Everyone's just like, no, okay, yeah, though no, that's oh, that's amazing. It's an amazing idea. Oh my god, yes. No, dude, fuck. It's like we're living in this world now where everything has to be tolerated and accepted and everything's like, yes, that's great. Or you can't offend my opinions. Mm. Like, fuck off. Do you also it's feel like they story. make this stuff with no intention of it being remembered and built on? In, like they, exactly. they practically make it knowing it'll be forgotten in about a year's time. A year's time, man. I've already forgotten. Like I'm, I'm having trouble in our stream right now, like remembering the shit about the acclaim. Like it's just in one, yeah. out the other. Like it's just a not... A rememberable show at all and it, it pisses me off because it's like it's literally just i found these old tapes i don't know if you saw i found these old tapes from when i was like 16 and like i saw my desk my star wars little desk where i had like cutouts from episode three literally just printed off of a printer and like put on the wall and like little figures and like holy shit it was just such a different feeling compared to now which is just I don't have the same feeling about Star Wars anymore. The only reason I'm continuing to make videos is because I have the passion I had from when I was a kid, and I'm trying to hold on to that and be like, no, let's, let's try to bring it forwards into this. And fuck, dude, it's it's dying. It's not. Oh, fuck. It's okay. Me and Ryan went through this like a decade ago. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, 2014. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, being, being, uh, you could if you wanted. Go ahead, Mahler. What are you going to say? I was just going to say that for me, it was more like 2017, to be fair, but still. Um, yeah, you guys woke up way faster than I did. Um, I think that we can actually talk about the Acolyte. Here's some things. Uh, like The way that they tried to portray the Jedi as the bad guys, right? That was obviously a, what they wanted to do in this show. A big part of what Leslie Headland talked about before the series in all the interviews of all these things. You are absolutely supposed to view them as the antagonists, as the bad guys in this show. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. The problem with that is, even with that knowledge of what they're trying to do, they do a really fucking shitty job of doing it. Yeah, because there's no way you can convince me with everything we've seen, with everything the Jedi witnessed, that they took wrong act you know maybe a misstep here or there but in terms of the core of their actions of being worried about these two girls who are mysteriously surrounded by all these fucking really creepy witch women that are using the dark side of the force like th the idea that they felt the need to intervene in some way you can't convince me that they're just the bad guys in this situation the writers did a really bad job of convincing us a lot of my issues with a lot of their actions are more so just the incompetence of their like primary operations in the investigation right for example of course we highlighted at the time because we thought that chimera could be he's a potential to be the spooky evil smiler ren turns out he was had they treated him the way that they should have in episode two we would have got the reveal of the sith lord immediately yeah he would have been arrested and detained yep this or he would have you know, forced to fucking reveal himself so he wouldn't be arrested or whatever, but yeah. And so on that front, it's like, well, yeah, the Jedi are incredibly incompetent. And then Leslie would be like, no, 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 that's not what I, no, they, 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 that's not what I meant. <laughs> We're like, yeah, no, I know. You, you, what you mean yeah. is that what they did on uh, the planet, the lesbian planet, was uh, that was evil. That was, you know, inflicting themselves wow. upon a culture that doesn't need them or want them. Let's be real. The whole reason... 
Torben or Tomim or whatever his name is died is like a representation, someone said it in the chat, of white guilt. That's literally why he died. You have nothing to be guilty about. What the? Yeah, like what, what did he do? He didn't do he, anything. He didn't the kid take got mind action. probed. So he did do one thing that was stupid, which was after being told and ordered to stand down, he wanted to get back to Coruscant because he'd been gone for seven weeks so badly. Maybe he likes the nightlife in Coruscant. I don't know. I don't really know what he's so excited to get back there for. But he takes off immediately. Hey, I, w this is our ticket home. To, like, prove the virgins, blah, 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 and takes off. But then Soul like catches up to him and they're locked out of the place. And it's like Soul's idea to continue on and like go up to climb and save them because they like Osha's literally about to get murdered by May, which he somehow is able to feel like I can't, you know. he's a Padawan. He arrives, doors locked. If Soul had just said, All right, we're not going in, you fucking crazy man, and <laughs> drew him back, whatever. But when Soul commands him to support him and yeah. to fortify his mind to prevent them from getting into it. I don't see how at that point he's just operating under the orders of his master, or rather the because Soul's yeah. like a Jedi Knight at that point, right? Yeah, still has uh, command over him. Literally, it'd be amazing to get Leslie in one of these streams and be like, just asking her questions, and just be like, "What? What do you? What were you thinking? <laughs> what were you thinking? Like what?" The thing is, man, you get more controversial statements out of it when you agree with her. In those interviews she has, when you start agreeing with everything she says, she'll come out with some of the stuff you're just like, "What?" Oh. Yeah, like God. when interviewers are like, is this what you were going for? Something like this. She's like, absolutely, 1,000%. That's 100% what I was going for. And I don't even know if she's being truthful in some of these or if she just is like, I never thought about it that way, but let's roll with it. Never have uh, I she, lost she just... more faith in a writer faster than hearing her response to describe a character she wrote by saying after like 20 seconds of pausing, uh, he's human. Yeah. Well, like, I, Torben, I get the... Torben's entire fucking like, character is so retarded to begin with because one how were they there for seven weeks and he didn't know what their mission was <laughs> oh what is God. he doing yeah. you've got Kelnaka with a fucking metal detector looking for the force you got <laughs> Torben I think Torben was like pulling up plants and putting them in a, a container looking for the force apparently <laughs> yeah uh, why do you find a virgins by putting mm -hmm. weeds in a box we're like, checking what? the land for metals like uh, so they did mention that this was a dead planet right and then something happened and all of a sudden it had life so maybe they they are collecting things like that to try to determine and get an idea of maybe trying to get the midichlorian count of plants I, I don't think so but maybe who fucking knows but th the easiest way for them to find a virgins in the force would be for them to meditate yeah that would be the e if there is one on this planet that would and by they, far be the easiest way for them to find it but but He's there for seven weeks and doesn't know shit. How do you arrive on a planet like that, survey it, and not spot the giant location with electrical, uh, you know, operations as well as a hell and of a lot of life? When you're fucking heat. landing down. You would like, see it, and they'd be like, scanners, oh, this is yeah. clearly a big structure where people live. Yeah. Yeah. But Your no, they break in, and then they say, sorry, we didn't know anybody was here. <laughs> well, the, the flammable <laughs> rocks are also impervious to sensors. They didn't explain that in detail. Uh... But... Gosh. Well, what do you think about Indara's power of killing all the witches with a head tilt? I don't, I don't get it. I don't even know if, like, I don't know what she was trying to do. Yeah, that was. I don't the, really she know. Confirmed it in an interview that that's exactly what she did. She killed. It, all was of she them. like? Was that? Is that was what that she thought would happen, or was she just trying to get them out and like out of his mind? You know what I mean? That's what. Like, it was very unclear to me. Like. Whether well, that to was make it or she knew that 100 percent clear, because I assume you guys agree. If your friend is being mind controlled to the point of trying to kill you by a group of people, and you have the power to stop that, however, it will kill all of the people doing that to him. Do you do that? It's like, well, they've put well, me in this position. So, what do you think? Yeah. It's like, yes. That's what I mean. Like, I don't see Indara as guilty as a result of this. I'd be like, well, she did what she had to do. No, she's not guilty at all. Yeah, she's defending an innocent life, basically, who happens to be another Jedi. Yeah, yeah, and a pa and her Padawan. Wait, Kelnaka? No, no, Torben. Uh, Torben. Oh, okay. And Soul and herself. To be fair, you know, everyone's herself, in danger too, yeah, for the, yeah. as long as a Jedi Wookiee, which they didn't properly represent at all in that sequence. Oh God, no! They just slow and clunky. He would have been fucking ripping his arm. Dude, off. he would have literally grabbed him and like. The the 
when Torben was holding his lightsaber in basically like a reverse <laughs> upside down grip Man. and somehow managing to hold off Kelnaka, who oh. had all that leverage, like there's Literally no like fucking way. Like that would not have happened. It's impossible. Against a Wookiee, against a human. I mean, I can't do anything really in this uh, angle here. Yeah, against, against a, a human, Wookie? you wouldn't have the leverage, let alone no. a Wookiee. No. The power's so bad. Yeah, it's bullshit. All of it was bullshit, and uh, I, you know, I, I don't understand the logic. There's a few things I don't understand. Like, first of all, the show. Second of all, the logic behind supporting this show. Like, I get it if you like it, but like, how do you not see any of the actual issues with the lore and whatever else it detracts from Star Wars? And and even that, if you don't understand the Star Wars lore, fine, whatever. Which a lot don't. But how do you also accept this as some sort of like? comprehensible media that actually makes sense like it's 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 a garbage show the characters don't make sense the writing doesn't make sense everything is super convenient i i just don't get it no yeah it's you're right you get constant contradictions including and not limited to right in that moment the trinity manages to outclass all of the witches which goes against the whole power of many shit yeah, like i know it's it's a kind of a meme but at the same time that does seem to contradict Leslie's whole idea with that culture. Well, like so think... what I found um, kind of like a, a interesting was in the latest interview that she had where she said Plagueis is Chimere's master, um, the whole, she was saying something about like how the whole show revolves around two. So the power of one, the power of two, the same thing when Chimere says he's looking for uh, two. What do you say? I'm looking for... The power of two. I'm looking for the like power that. of two. I think yeah. is what he said. And then Plagueis with the rule of two. So playing on that shit. Okay, <laughs> but like still, you know. Yeah. Well, I. It, me, yeah. Like certainly to me that was a reference to that, right? Um, yeah, it was a reference. Like that's how I think it was intended to be. But like Plagueis doesn't even have another fucking apprentice at this point. He's just training with Tenebris. Well, that's all thrown out the window, though. Like, legitimately, that's thrown out the window. Oh, because now it's confirmed that Chimere is his apprentice. So all of that shit thrown out the window. Um, like, mm. you can't consider any of it valid because they've so clearly retconned it. You know what I mean? Which, I mean, doesn't make it okay. It is bullshit, whatever. But that just kind of is the way it is. Um, now... The, the questions I have regarding Plagueis are is he in on this thing with Chimere like trying to recruit May in some way or is Chimere the Sith apprentice who is trying to find someone to help him overthrow his master that's what I think it like, is because she said that like oh it's such a beautiful ending and we nailed it because they know that even though they're looking out into the horizon they're doomed because of Plagueis. Yeah, and there's a sense of foreboding, basically, because of Plagueis, which is why they didn't right. put him at the end. They put him in the middle because they didn't want to ruin that positive corruption moment. That's so that fucked up the that they're like, so oh, yeah, this, the fear of Plagueis. It's like, how about the fear of they should be killed because they're horrible monsters that have been wiping people. out innocent people? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's. The, I don't know what's worse, like someone actually writing this and thinking it's good or Lucasfilm signing off on it and thinking this is acceptable well hey man there's been a lot of moral ambiguity in star wars like when anakin blew up the death star you got to think about these things yeah it's um it's unfortunate but i don't know man um anything else you want to talk about regarding the show before we get into the soupies it's, that's gonna be fun take a while um <laughs> man i feel like there's a lot to talk about with there's the a lot to talk about it's just um Fuck. I, um, so, so, what other characters have we not kind of dug in? Like the the whole May and Ocean thing is kind of the funniest part. We, like these are the main characters, <laughs> and no one gives two fucks about them. Fuck Basil, the bitch ass. Basil should have been killed by a couple different people in this. I'm not even like, kidding. What the fuck was Basil ba doing in the last Basil, episode? I was gonna say Basil is the reason almost everything in the last episode happens. And, yeah. and apparently there's no, there's no fucking droid in the universe uh, that can talk to Basil and translate what he's saying. This person has all the information about what just happened here. Yeah, and Yord your got his neck snapped. Basil's a huge plot hole. He's why one of the, the biggest ones. Dude, why is he ripping apart the ship? 
But think about what? it though, right? If Basil behaved the way we expected, which w he was loyal to the Jedi, or at least with them, and he recognized what May was, even helped Soul capture it, had he, you know, fuck it, he could have prevented her from launching off. But let's just let's just say Soul did do it. Like, have you guys settled on he was going to blow her up? Soul. Uh, I, I no, think I think he was going to shoot her. I think he was going to shoot her. Sure. I don't, if, why if would he hesitate if it was captured? Was a tractor beam or something that was a really bad job of doing that. It looked to me clearly like he had well, it. Okay, his he was going to try one, to shoot her down. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So if it's a if it's shoot uh, if it was a tractor beam, one, why did he hesitate? And two, why would Basil want to stop him from tractor beaming her? <laughs> exactly. Like he was trying like, to shoot her, but that also wild. doesn't really make any sense with and everything least, we know about Soul in this moment either. At least wow. if he was trying to shoot her, Basil could have the argument of like, no, killing is mean. I don't need to do that. You know, as pathetic as it is, that's slightly more than nothing. Obviously, my confusion with that is just, what the fuck was Basil doing sabotaging the ship? Basil is actually tenebrous. <laughs> that's what's going on. We had another Sith in the show that no one told us he about. He fucking transferred his essence into, into <laughs> Yeah. It's wild. But yeah. Uh, yeah, unironically though, Basil knows all the things he needs to say to like, it, it, you know, the investigation when they run it and they're like, so translation, you had some kind of creature doing that for you. Can I speak to the creature? And then they're like, yep, there's Basil. Get a translation. And he's like, yeah, there was a Sith Lord who was like killing everybody. Um, Soul wasn't responsible. And um, May and Osha like evil twins. Uh, what else do you want to know? And the investigator's like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? What is all of this insane information that Vanessa has clearly lied about? And Yoda now, too. Don't forget. Yeah, of course. Oh, and I've seen people actually say there's a good chance Basil works for Vanestra, and that's the only way that they're going to make this work, which... Are that... What if someone mind, can... mind reads Basil, then? <laughs> yeah, like they've done multiple times in the show when it was convenient. And then it turns out it's Basil's like an expert Force user. He is... He is Plagueis. <laughs> Vanestra, like, knowing this could happen, gives... Uh, Basil, a Cortosis helmet, which now apparently oh prevents people from Holy reading shit. your mind. Oh, it's like Wolverine. He's his whole skeleton is coated in Cortosis, so you can't <laughs> access his brain. Can't actually kill him. <laughs> can't actually destroy him. And also the fact that they like literally crashed in the middle of those rings, like that, that would have destroyed both of those ships. Yes, like unequivocally, it would have destroyed them. Like what a ships what do a have. Retarded. He fucking locked her up with her. All-purpose droid. That ship bugs the hell out of me. What a dumbass. Like, ships do have shielding to protect from, uh, like, small particles. I have particle shielding and stuff like that to protect them from traveling at such high velocities through space and hitting something, even puncturing a small hole or whatever. But th that is not going to prevent this mass of fucking rocks that you're running into at a very high speed. That was nuts. That that's what how they decided to do this little thing, like Soul didn't need to like crash into that at all. Um, he could have literally just stayed above her the entire time. She has no hyperdrive; she can't go anywhere. Like the only choice she has is to land on this planet. Soul could have just fucking followed her for a while. Yeah. Well, what doesn't make sense is like you know Leslie could have had the, <clears throat> for example, in that case, an asteroid. Maybe they, they both hit the asteroid or the. The debris and then they have to crash land on the planet she's like how do we get them to the planet well let's have the gopher freaking pull all the mechanical parts out of the ship and have it crash land with what's her face may into the planet well no why don't you just have the ship like i don't know get dinged up and go there same with the witches we have to get rid of all the witches okay why don't you you, you already have a fire the whole thing's crumbling down why don't you just have yeah, but like, that would mean that may killed them all and you can't have that well, too bad. <laughs> I know, right? Like, what do you want? Remember, the, oh, that's yeah. like resolved at the end of the fucking show where she's just like, sorry I set the fire. It's like, oh, it's See, okay. I'm just looking to things too logically, but she has an agenda to be like, no, we can't have it. The Jedi have to be the bad guys. It's like, that that doesn't make any sense. Why? Because Someone just mentioned as well, like, yeah, when Darth Maul says, finally we'll reveal ourselves, you got Sidious being like, well, we did reveal ourselves a while back, recently. <laughs> my, <laughs> so, my master. Yeah, my, my has... master had an apprentice before me. His name was Kai Mia, and he fucked up a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> Not really important, but yeah. <laughs> and he had an apprentice too, and uh, actually he had two of them, but then one got mind wiped, and uh, yes, I... Then uh... it's just Darth Maul with a Breaking Bad meme of, 
what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, I don't what? know. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? That's a hilarious skit. I think I'm about to do that. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Shit. Anybody in the chat that actually wants to read a fucking decent book around a similar time period about the Sith, just fucking read Plagueis. Just read it. Um, you'll be way better off than watching this shit. Darth Plagueis the Wise. You know what I'm having made right now? By a Plagueis talented... lightsaber. No. Um, a Plagueis I don't have any other guesses then. Not everything is a plug for theory sabers. Um... Having this created right now, actually. Um, was it like a mask? A fucking, or? Yeah, it's it's a literal Plagueis mask. Plagueis mask. It's a yeah. moon. Yeah. Check that out. Magister Higo Damask. 3D printed. Nice. It's for the last like 20 hours. It's going to be hilarious. It's going to be very funny. Put a big a lot of good on. skits. Yep. Make sure it's yep. black, not white. Well, confusion. Well, I guess the bad guys are the good guys now. Yeah, like it's it's not like George has like said multiple times the Jedi, even though having made mistakes, are like the most moral people in the galaxy. Yeah, right. Wouldn't want to fuck that up, would we? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's boy. the reason why I have no idea if we'll get a season two. The worst decision they could possibly make for Star Wars movies right now is to make a ray focused one, and they chose to. <laughs> So one of the worst things they could also do is make a season two of the Acolyte. And it's like, well, they wouldn't do that, right? And you're like, maybe they would. Maybe they would fucking would. I don't know. Yeah, that's you know what, what I mean. That's why I'm really like, to me, it's it's 50-50 whether they do that shit or not. Because I think, I think they will. I mean, no one in the right just, mind should. They haven't made a no, second season of Kenobi. Yeah, which you have to imagine considering he's on board that they did the numbers and they were like, there's no point. Yeah. But with this, you know for a fucking fact if they ran the numbers, they'd be like, there's no point. But yeah. there's, other, there's other motivations going on for making particular shows. Right. Do you know when the reason I... They want to do it. The reason I don't think they're going to do Kenobi Season 2 is because even they are like, well, we kind of don't have any ideas for this story. You have to basically fight Darth Vader again. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like right. That's probably the only <laughs> things in their minds in terms of story that they can come up with. And like, well, fuck. It would unironically be Bale fucking contacting me, and he's like, you'll never guess what, Obi. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Kenobi's in his hut, be like, fuck, what? Hey, Ben, like, sorry to bug you again. Leia got kidnapped and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, shit. That's wild. Oh, well. I mean, at least Marvel's looking like it's uh, on the up. That's good. Uh, Marvel sure. is making a course correction 100 yeah. percent, like an admission yeah. that hey we are headed the wrong way we need to drastically change things up hiring back the russos the people that are behind some of the more beloved projects in the mcu but also endgame unfortunately um but have also been very critical of the direction of marvel over the past couple years since they left bringing them back on board getting rid of all the kang shit and <laughs> being you know victor von doom in doomsday avengers 5 instead of king dynasty real robert downey jr it is 100% a course correction. I'm not sure that the course correction is headed in a good way necessarily, but they've changed course, right? We need to identify the difference between course correction and pandering. Well, it's just yeah. nice that they have actually kind of let us know that they did fuck up, like even when in uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. Well, did you not uh, see it? Yeah, I see it. Oh, dude, they were like, let's just take the L. We know we fucked up and let's move on. Well, Deadpool over in very much is going to be something made fun of everything, right? Uh, yeah. Which we saw very similar in the first couple Deadpools, whether it's Ryan Reynolds' past projects or it's movies he was a part of that he like shits on now. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of jokes about the 20th Century Fox Marvel Universe and, of course, a lot of jokes about the MCU and Disney in general in this one. I don't think that Deadpool Wolverine is a... like. I don't think that movie itself is them being like, yeah, we really fucked things up. Uh, I think it's more just a parody that was meant to be what it was. Um, I, I do think to Mahler's point, the difference between ch you know, course correction versus pandering, this is 100% a desperate move by them, but I think it remains to be seen whether the intention is like good or not, if that makes sense. 
I um, think they gave us in that movie the most milk toast corporate safe. Uh, we agree with you. We hear you. We're going to give you everything you're looking for. And then they give a big thumbs up. And I'm just, I'm just looking at it like you're not even human, are you? You're like a skin demon thing. Yeah. You're, you're saying things like they're aware of what we want. They're not interested in giving it, I don't think. And um, that movie is filled with little lines and criticisms of things they do in that movie. I don't even know, like, like to have all this criticism of multiverses and to say that that's arguably a, a portion of what's killing the MCU, and then immediately after announce a huge multiversal project, right? I'm just saying, like, okay, yeah, I feel like this is actually just a way to be like, hey, we hear you. We're not listening, though. Well, I yeah. feel like Deadpool and Wolverine is just its own thing. Um, I felt that way from the beginning, that like, the, the, whatever happens in that movie is not going to be, like, the, the Disney way moving forward or something like that. Uh, to me, it's probably, like, the least... Marvel, like Disney Marvel controlled project they've probably ever had. They're like, yeah. hey, listen, people love fucking Ryan Reynolds, the Deadpool shit. People love Hugh Jackman. Let's bring them together, kind of let them do their thing. Yeah. Um, and we'll put it in the framework of it does exist in the MCU, and you have to kind of tie that in with the TVA bullshit. But yeah. absent that, which I hated, by the way, but absent they really that, didn't have to, it was think. very much its own thing. How would like, you rather have done it? Did she, and it's like some people have forgotten what was in Deadpool 1 and 2, which I really like, by the way. The end of Deadpool 2 has him with a cable device that allows him to travel through uh, time and space. Just use that to get Wolverine. You don't need the TVA. Don't include yeah, He literally the time travels in the post credit sequences of, uh, of universe Deadpool travels. 2. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, he goes to uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine and kills himself in that movie because it was so bad. Like it's oh, wow. That's the I kind of shit this. that I find to be much more edgy and honest in terms of like accepting criticism kills himself because he's reading the green lantern script like that yeah, shit's yeah, funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah you could have used all that but involving the tva establishing fucking what was it uh anchor beings that shit was insane an absolute nonsense and then they couldn't resolve it properly right because you introduce the power for deadpool to travel through all of time and space but you don't allow him to travel back in time and rescue the logan he actually wants from death yeah that's that would be the obvious first plan that you would do yeah, that's I, just, I I hate time travel shit. That's yeah, why I didn't like fuck, Endgame. Involving it fucks you over. You shouldn't have done it. Um, they could have come up with any other reason. I would actually have fucking preferred he tries to destroy that device, hits it with a hammer, it sparks, flies everywhere, and then Wolverine just goes <laughs> and just appears out of it. And he's like, "What the hell?" And then the device explodes. It's gone forever. And Wolverine's like, "What the hell? Like, why am I here?" That you know, just solve the problem of getting Wolverine back home. That's what the the whole movie is. The That'd anchor cool. point. I've heard a lot yeah, of speculation yeah. now that they're going to recontextualize Tony Stark's Iron Man as like the anchor being in uh, the MCU proper. Well, I yeah, think it probably is. So is Logan in a different timeline? He, Logan oh. shared the timeline with Deadpool. Yes. The Logan you know from Logan, but the Wolverine in the movie was taken from a different timeline. Right. Like Deadpool exists within the Fox, the 20th century Fox universe, within which the X-Men, universe. The, X -Men yeah. the original X-Men movies. Um, and then, of course, Logan would be a sequel to those movies. But then the Avengers is a different timeline than Logan and Deadpool. That's the one thing that like I found Thor interesting with the inclusion of John Thanos. Favreau with that shit um, was like what universe exactly was that like, was the sacred timeline. I don't know why exactly. Deadpool chose to travel specifically there to join the Avengers as opposed to the Avengers of his own universe. And if there were no Avengers in his own universe, why wouldn't he try to join the X-Men? So our universe is 616, right? Oh, fuck. Um, are you talking about, well, the sa just call like, it the like sacred that's, timeline. That's, that's the sacred, the sacred that's timeline. That's the main event with Thanos and... and... Yes. Okay. So where's Logan and Deadpool? Earth. They're in the Fox timeline. But that's the thing. He wasn't traveling when he did that. He was just like, he was just there. Which they would say he travels. They, they say they label it as the the correct universes. I don't Do know they, why in that, in that scene. Yeah, I don't know why. I guess he used cable to get to him. Yeah, I don't understand why. Because yeah. what he's done with them, he goes back to the Fox universe and they label it. Yeah, but it's what, so fucking what's, confusing. Uh, what's the label of the Fox Universe? What's the number? It's like one zero one one zero zero one. Yeah, it's like it's one zero 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 five. Chat says something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Or one zero 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 one zero. I think it was the one zero zero one zero. 
I think that was it. Oh. I don't know. It's really fucking hard to track, and and I I really wish they hadn't involved any TVA Confusing. nonsense. To be honest with you. I didn't like that they had him trying to join the Avengers anyway. I didn't feel like that was a Deadpool move whatsoever, especially after Deadpool 2 where he makes his own team. And they all die. No, they don't. Oh, most, most of them die tragically. He saved them. They forgot this. He saved oh, them yeah. at the end. In the post credit sequence, he does save all of them, yeah. They're not, not only did... Because, oh, fucking hell, you make me remind me how much I hate this movie. So they that opening dinner scene or whatever, there are members of X-Force in the fucking room, but then he says yeah. they all died. Like, how do you put them in the room, but then forget that he actually saved them? Is the post credit scene, like, canon, or is it just... No, no, no. The, in Deadpool and Wolverine, Shatterstar is there. He's one of the members of X-Force that died, but he went back and saved him. That's why he's in Deadpool and Wolverine. That's why, it's why he's, he can be there at all. But then in the movie, they say that his whole team died. They didn't yeah. die. He saved them. It's been a while since I watched Deadpool 2. He didn't only save Peter. Yeah. He is in the room with them. I don't know why, though. It's, they fucked it up. Uh, mm. Yeah. I, don't mean that I always thought funny. it was funny that he might have gone back and only saved Peter because he's the only one he liked. But um, like I said, you see other members of X-Force are in the... They're alive and chatting with people. So I was like, okay, I guess so. So is it implied he had the cable device still to travel to that multiverse to try to... Apparently, every decision he made at the end of Deadpool 2 is canon because he even mentions it to the TVA and they were like, no, we're not worried about that, even though as far as I'm they aware... They would be worried about that, yeah. Of course they'd be worried about that. Well, what was funny is I was talking to Drinker about it and he said, is it is it fair to assume they went and undid all the things he did? And then I was like, well, they couldn't have because he saved his girlfriend and she's alive. Right. So like, that my, doesn't work. My... Well... They would have tried to correct it immediately if anything like that had happened, not wait six years. But at this yeah, point too. in time, the guy he talked to in the TVA wouldn't have been worried about it because he wants him to do something that is like he wants him to do something that is fucking off books for whatever. Right. Does I mean, get serious. Huh? huh? Does Deadpool ever get serious? Yeah. I mean, obviously not as serious as most fucking comic book shit. Um, but. Like to me, most Deadpool movies, like the, the way I view the first couple, are there's there's a nice little story, a little bit of character stuff in there, but not as much as you would receive in most shit. Um, there's stuff that can be kind of a good payoff, but for the most part, um, to me, it's an entertaining movie filled with gratuitous fucking violence, swearing, jokes, and shit like that you don't typically see in comic book movies. Yeah. Not to say that there's no story or anything like that. No, so I don't no. know how many people actually did, but I rewatched Deadpool one and two before seeing three, and Deadpool one has a lot more serious shit in it than I think people remember it having. I yeah, think I Deadpool one is better than this one for Deadpool sure. Deadpool one's way better um, than three, I, and I have watched that one recently, like in the past two months. Uh, I had not had time to rewatch Deadpool two because I was actually on the road when I ended up watching Deadpool three. But to me, in terms of when I walked out of the theater, I felt very similar to the way I felt when I walked out of Deadpool. Deadpool one has the um that mo there's a couple of moments. One of my favorite ones is he's getting tortured excessively, and he keeps up the the jokey sort of the aspect, show, like yeah. you you can't bring him down, sort of thing. And uh, Francis is desperate to like break him, and you get a back and forth with another prisoner where they're talking about all the silly things they're gonna do when they get out. Like they're talking about you know having sex with certain celebrities or <laughs> going nuts and jump skydiving naked stuff like that. But then the other one mentions like making food for his kids. And then the other one, uh, Deadpool mentions just being with Vanessa, right? It gets like super serious. And then he gets put in the final version of the torture, which actually does activate the mutation. And when Wade recognizes that's happened to him, he's not joking anymore. He's like panicked, scared, fucking furious, and uh, feels like completely betrayed, right? Like it's, it's the film gets serious. And um, I'd say his relationship with Vanessa is quite serious. There's everything to do with Wade rather than Deadpool is delivered in a, quite a human and, and grounded way. He's much more of a person. I feel like the third one, there's, there's not much of that from, you don't get much Wade. You get pretty much 110% flounderized Deadpool. He's um, you get slight pieces as far as I'm concerned of getting serious, but it's nowhere near as good. I was going to say there, there are moments, you know, especially when he's like, he's hold, like holding up the picture to try to explain yeah. to Logan, like what the fuck is going on. And he's it's like, so brief. And um, it's often 
like undercut immediately by they don't let that breathe. It's it's like I'm gonna fight you now, and then they and the, the fight scene itself is supposed to be funny. And like Wolverine's speech about how shit Deadpool is is funny as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like there's not. Um, I didn't feel a lot of people have been saying the the movie has plenty of heart. I didn't feel it. Uh, no, I think it was just a whole bunch of like cameos and uh, you know fan service and uh, just kind of like a great dynamic of two characters who are buddies in real life, which is great. Yeah. But beyond that, I don't think there was really that much great writing in the for like no. where the story could go. It would just kind of dragged on and the 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 bad guy wasn't really um I don't know, wasn't really all that interesting. It was just like Xavier's twin sister that he never met before, which is like extremely powerful, but at the same time, like there wasn't really unless you're just kinda of introduced halfway through the show the movie and you're like okay i'm not really too invested in this yeah then she wants to destroy the entire multiverse it's like she's like super op which like the character in real life is super op um but it was like is this the best character for deadpool wolverine and a handful of other uh which i thought were cool additions uh to take on probably not gambit and electra and blade i mean i was i didn't know if we wanted to talk real spoilers or anything um well we well how much time do you want to are we done with acolyte oh right yeah i think we're done no i think we're gonna go back to it and then we're gonna do super chats and so we'll go back to it once we do super chat because i'm sure there's there's like a million questions about the acolyte okay I was trying Anyways. not to spoil it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, sorry, guys, but I mean, I figured if they know we're talking about Deadpool and Wolverine for like the last 15 minutes, they'd probably turn away. Yeah, like all those people who just tuned in for uh, the Acolyte <laughs> Review with Mahler, Ryan, and Theory Stardraft, <laughs> who just pop in and they're like, so yeah, Deadpool, look, all these characters come in. Yeah. Wow, Theory, how could you? Oh, I, ca I care about people. I don't know if you've realized that theory. You don't give really, a fuck about I really it. care about people. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm looking okay. out for them. My bad. Sorry. Rossi with five Star Wars theories. <laughs> Thank you, Rossi. Thanks, Hell, yeah. Rossi. Lance for a buck ninety nine says Revenge of the Grift. Are we are we doing soupies now? Is that what we're doing? What were you doing? <laughs> just fucking hey, stared just... into space. I, Bro, I was waiting to... for one of you. I was waiting for one of you to say something, seeing where it would go. How long can someone stay quiet here on this show? Who knows? <sighs> Grift is real. So I guess we're done talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. I was enjoying it. Hey man, steer away. Whatever you want. Whatever. Uh, it's the one only time it's fitting to say that we're so back for a bit. Yeah, for one episode. Um, do you guys know anything yet about Skeleton Crew? Not really. Jude Law and... It's about a bunch of kids that get lost John in Watts. another galaxy. I think maybe they're going to be the ones to bring Ahsoka home. Oh my god. Oh, jeez. Do you know what timeline it takes place? <laughs> 616. Uh, it's it's in the Mandoverse... <laughs> it, no, it's in the Mandoverse 616. era. Like you know oh. what I mean? Like, the... oh shit! So it can actually play into the Mando movie then? Yes, like I believe this show is part of that specific show. I assume that's what you meant when you said they could get Ahsoka back, not like through the fucking will between worlds or some shit. Yeah, I was being like genuinely. Oh, you're being real. Yeah. I was being real about like that might be a possibility considering what we know about it. Oh, I see. I thought okay. Uh, because of Ryan, I have to now read Heir to the Empire Trilogy, Plagueis Bane, and I've started Outbound Fight Flight. Any other EU recommendations so I can forget about the Acolyte? Hell yeah, read the X-Wing series. The X-Wing series is fucking awesome. Takes place like a year or two after Return of the Jedi, but before uh, the original Thrawn trilogy. Um, that thing's awesome. Wedge Antilles is a badass. should check out Filmento. He just released a video on the Acolyte. It's called The Acolyte, How to Make the Most Hated Star Wars Show. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. What is it? I mean, do you know about this? No, it's just we've covered Phil Bento like four times on EFAP. Ah. He's a funny channel. 
Great to see you guys reunited. Incoming super chat and my belief of the outcome of Star Wars within the next 10 years. Have you guys seen um, the gameplay for Star Wars Outlaws? Oh, it looks terrible. It looks really bad. That was a miserable 10 minute like selection. And I, everybody's replies are just like, what the fuck is this? Why would you want to release this selection? Yeah. Yeah. It was weird. Like, and that's kind of what I'm wondering is like, what goes through the heads of these guys there that are signing off on all this stuff? You know, like the Acolyte, Star Wars Outlaws, whatever else mm -hmm. they're trying to peddle. It's just like, I don't know. It's, it almost seems like they don't have any clue, or they do, and they just do the opposite. So the official description for Skeleton Crew, Star Wars Skeleton Crew follows the journey of four kids who make a mysterious discovery on their seemingly safe home planet, then get lost in a strange and dangerous galaxy. Now... When I read that, I guess I interpret it as a different galaxy. I guess it could imply the same galaxy. I, I don't fucking know. Finding their way home and meeting unlikely allies and enemies will be a greater adventure than they ever imagined. Ooh. Maybe they'll meet Wolverine. <laughs> Maybe. Dig up Logan's corpse and dance to sync. Yeah, why not? Yeah, so about that. Wouldn't all of his DNA still be in his bones, which is inside of the adamantium. So, like, wouldn't he be able to regenerate? Or is it just trapped inside there? Is that the problem? So, what if? Well, I mean, the you just use the logic from Logan, which is that um, he, got old. he was like the adamantium had poisoned him for his whole existence, right? Like his healing factor was overcoming it, but it couldn't overcome it forever. Okay, so what if so what if he wasn't covered in adamantium? Would he have been alive forever then? Ah, uh, who can say, right? Uh, it's de dependent on the writer if they would say that it would eventually run out. Who can say if he lived to a thousand or not? I don't know. Okay, but so is there not another version of a comic somewhere where he does not die? Probably. Like I said, I'd, I'd, it would depend on the writer if they want to make him live forever or not or have a spell. Or it could be done on its own or a medical thing. If you remember in Logan, he can get those injections that like supercharge his mutant ability as well. Yeah. Like temp V. How small of pieces do you have to chop Logan up to and separate them until like he can't heal again? The same for Deadpool, isn't it? What, uh, how far can you go? So if you chop off Logan's head, it won't re regrow back. That's what you're saying. Um, I don't have the answer to that question. If I were Gary, I might. What about uh, if you can get the rest of the body connected again, maybe it'll heal. I don't know. We saw him chop off Wade's head in uh, fucking X Men, the X Men Origins. Right. And yeah, the people implication don't like to consider was that. he was still alive. People right. don't like that considered canon, right? <laughs> it's, uh... But we're, we're, we're just talking about random stories from, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, he cut off his brother's head, Sabretooth. Yeah, and he died. Dead. Dude, what oh. was the deal with, uh... Ah, fuck. Uh, Daphne Keene's character. X-23? Yeah, X-23. What about it? Cutting off, um, what's his face? Juggernaut's legs. I didn't know Gillies. he's so... Yeah. I didn't know he's so, uh... Weak. Cuttable. Yeah. You'd think Juggernaut would probably have a bit more resistance even to adamantium blades, but I guess not. Yeah, you'd think so. Didn't even get to do a run. Nope. Neither did Sabretooth get to do a fight. He just died, both of them. Yep. One of those fun key jangles. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Oh, well. Spoilers. Nah. <laughs> it's not much of a spoiler if there was nothing to be spoiled, if you know what I mean. It's like... If you see the trailer, you'll see them, and that's all you get. Do we, do we, Legs, did we right, see Juggernaut? Helmet. Yeah, Juggernaut was in the trailer, right? Yeah. The helmet's supposed to protect him? What do you mean the helmet's supposed to protect him? The helmet protects him from everything? He forgot to wear I his mean, helmet for his Achilles. Well, how yeah. does that protect his Achilles? <laughs> I was joking. It does, okay. it's well, joking. I don't know these characters as well as you. <laughs> You should have Mala do some voice lines in your next skit for Mog or Plagueis. Oh, Mog. 
any goofy ass thing you want, I'll happily assist, especially Mog. Mog was my favorite character. Yeah. If you can get um, a Disney Plus show for Mog, I think that might be able to save Star Wars. I think I was saying this was the last night or a couple nights ago. A, a show with Mog and Basil. Mm hmm. It'd be great. Musk is at war, or did Gary say that? I don't know. Everything's blending together nowadays. Musk is at war with what he calls the woke mind virus. He plans on buying Disney after he wins Gina Carano's case and cleaning up all of Disney. Wouldn't that be hilarious if he buys it and then <laughs> brings us all on board? Uh, yeah. Like, I don't know where you're getting your information from, uh, but thank you. I don't think that would ever, ever happen, ever. Not happen. You don't think he's ever going to buy Disney? No. Or Lucasfilm? No. Probably not. Why? Um, he only has so much money and he's interested in doing a lot more things with it than just buying Disney. If he's in interested in destroying the woke mind virus, then he's probably going to go through all forms of media, which makes me believe why he purchased Twitter in the first place. So Walt Disney, like the Disney company right now, uh, if Elon Musk were, say, to try to buy all the stock, right, the market cap of Disney is more than Elon Musk more money than Elon Musk has, even as the richest man in the world. What's it worth? Around $170 billion. Sure, he can get a loan. Sure. But what, what I'm saying is it's like fantastical fantasy shit for people that are saying that. So let's it's say a what he, if story. Let's say he were to have the money. But you, you think if he offered Disney $180 billion, they would take it? I don't know. No, yeah, I can't. I can't tell you. That's the question. Is like, would, would all the boardroom guys be like, "Holy shit, that's a lot of cash." If we, yeah, sure. You know, I'm, I'm not convinced freaking... he would want to spend that kind of money on that. I just, like, I think Elon has so. like uh, somewhere around 200 billion or whatever. But like, a lot of that's wrapped up in things he currently owns, right? Like, yeah. so much of that is wrapped up in what he owns in Tesla. Now he fucking owns Twitter, like all, all these different things. Yeah. So the idea that he just has $160 billion of money to throw at something is nonsensical. Well, him and Bezos should team up. I think Elon cares way more about SpaceX than he does about Disney. Yeah. Um, well, after what he said about his son, I don't know. I would even argue that. I would say that his number one thing in the world to, is to destroy the woke mind virus, as he so calls it. And I think he'll probably go through media to do that. Fair enough. Anyways. It sounds like a fucking Mike Zero video, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm sure Mike Zero would have a great take on it. I would watch that. Kyle Katarn was catfished by Ash Rendar. I saw this, yeah. That's, uh... Yeah, anyways. Um, yo, Theory, I disagree with the Filoni stuff, but yeah, the way you treat your fans is pretty awesome. Do you have any more plans for conventions? Yeah, I'll be at SpaceCon, end of October. San Antonio, Texas. Ryan, you going? Um, To where? San Antonio? What convention yeah. is that? Uh, SpaceCon. Jeremy's um, going to be there. Me, like, me and Ripper are going to have a, a massive booth site. I'll have my booth. It's going to be right next to his. I have no like. idea. I have no idea. I, have, have, I wasn't necessarily planning on it, so we'll see. Right. When it, when is it? End of October. Halloween. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be cool. We'd all be down there. Hang out. What up, Big Larry? OSHA and May will always be foreskin. <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, hey, Star Wars Grift, a blessing to y'all. Don't let people silence you. Speak your mind. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let the truth be found by anyone. Truth might hurt, but it's still true. Um, yeah. You know, I don't think anybody can uh, silence us at this point. They've tried. Mahler, which is worse, Acolyte or Batwoman? Oh. It shouldn't be close because Batwoman is such abominable crap. But I guess Acolyte has the one up on Batwoman for like the choreography is better. 
the special effects Wait, are better. Yeah, I mean, but I don't I, even want well, to get I, into Batwoman. These are completely different things, though. Like, what do you think the budget for Batwoman is? No, of for course, like, the CW shit episodes, show. That's kind of my episodes, point, though. Batwoman, if we're yeah. all, you know, all things considered in isolation, just what show is the better show? I guess it's probably Acolyte, but I mean, Batwoman was way funnier. How did you see Batwoman? How did I see it? I thought it was canceled. Yeah, well, three seasons. You get to get to yeah. watch them up if you want to. It's like, how, wait, how did you see Return of the Jedi? That came out like <laughs> 40 years ago. No, no, hold on. But wasn't Batwoman canceled? Like, didn't they make it and nobody saw you're it? You're talking about, you're thinking about the Batgirl movie. Yeah. He's talking about Batwoman, the CW. Batwoman, the TV show. In the era. Oh, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. Oh. Wait, there's a Batwoman and a Batgirl? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. There's also a Batman. It's... Yeah, is there a Batboy? Maybe. He's called Robin. There's a Batmite. Jesus. It's 2024, and I still don't know what the First Order is and where it came from or who the Knights of Ren are. Well. Yeah. Just club. wait. Acolyte Season 2 will take care of it. Uh, as a friendly reminder, Amanda Stenberg is not half white. Her father is Jewish. <laughs> well, there you go. I got the Darth Revan and Darth Starkiller Sabres, both profi. Great quality. Love them both. But I do have one criticism. The purple isn't dark enough. Well, did you get uh, a dull blade? Oh, wait. What do you mean? No, you can change it to RGB, right? You can change all the colors around. We can go back. We can maybe change it to a little bit of a deeper purple if you so wish. It's definitely something we can take into account. No season two means you'll never see Pickle Rick take her purple flopper to Smilo. Oh my god, dude. I read this shit. You guys start reading this, man. Why do I get... Fuck, Did anyone really care that Vernie whipped a suicidal bug? Not particularly. Acolyte can be summed up to one word, poodoo. Uzumaki. A... They could have used a dark side coven called the Sayugi Dervish, which are dark side assassins who use the force to enhance their physical abilities. Jedi wiped them out, but some survived. Yeah, there are different force using sects that are out there in the galaxy. That they could have used. It's good to see you guys together. Thanks, Star Wars Vids. Star Vids. I have an early UPS 3 a.m. work shift, so I need a nap. I'll watch the rest later. May the force be with you. Right on, man. What can Brown do for you? In the name of all holy FFS, cancel Disney Plus. For fuck's sake. Hey, Theory, it's George. Why are you selling Ray Skywalker's yellow lightsaber in the Theory Saber shop? I thought you hated the sequels. Shame on you. Well, we like to be inclusive to everyone, and uh, we're here to sell sabers. And at the end of the day, if someone wants a inspired saber from uh, that timeline, then they can find it with us. You get a lot of sales on the sequel trilogy sabers? No. Come to Star Wars Theory. It's all about inclusivity here. Wait, that's like question assuming you're allowed to share it like from your own perspective what is the best selling saber probably the annie chosen one well it depends it depends what you're looking for if you're looking for there's there's different tiers if you want to spend big then yeah people go for the profi chosen one if they want something that everyone can most people can afford they go for the uh the prodigal son v1 the affordable version that's probably the best seller because it's just a freaking hell of a saber for what you get. Out of all the sort of Sith lightsabers, is Darth Vader's the best seller? Or? Mm, I'd have to check. I'd have to check on that one. Um, but it's definitely up there. When you're getting Oops, your Sandman. Jackies up there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah. Um, you're going to make them chunky? Kalnakas? No. T <laughs> big, big, big boy, very girthy. Hit me with it. Like, do you do you want to offer these on the shop? I was like, no, no. <laughs> so I not inclusive. Not all about inclusivity. <laughs> yeah, not inclusive I anymore. I'm, I guess I'm not that inclusive. No, I suppose not. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, what's your rating on Deadpool movie? I give it a nine out of ten. Uh, 
Fun factor, I give it like a eight. Story factor, I'll give it like a eh, what, four, five. So uh, what does that leave it? Like a six or seven? Six out of ten? Yeah, I think I think nine's way too fucking high in terms of like enjoyment level. Like a seven, you know, mm. had a good time with it. Um, but yeah, in terms of like if you're rated as a movie, movie, and not just how much fun did you have, it's it's pretty mid in my opinion in that category. Um. Mahler, re regarding the Sabres, by the way, um, we're going to be launching something that I think you'll be very interested in. Mm. And I might have to send you something else. Is it? How can you say that and then not anything else? I'm because we've been working on it that. for months and I've been like teasing it, but I just, uh, it's it'll be ready this Thursday. And that's like the final. For the record, I am still 110% uh, in love with that Dooku Saber. It's, it's wonderful. I'm glad you like it. So much we, fun to mess around with and hit my friends with. We just upgraded it as well, so now it, it doesn't come apart from the middle part, so you don't have to be super careful. Wait. Oh, you mean the newer versions the are... The newer version. Yeah, you don't... Like you, you have the, you have the, yeah, you have the previous version. Well, I mean, functionality-wise, oh. it's the same. If but... it breaks, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to send you another one of the when we release this new feature, which is going to be... Fuck, it's taken a long time, but it's a game changer, man. No one's done mm. this. Uh, I have a $180 million question for you lads. Why did Brazil reek the ship to save May when Sol was chasing her? Basil beat her up on two episodes before. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know. We sense. did have a big old chat about that. Yeah, Basil is an enigma. I think we can just chop it up to. I don't even think Leslie knows. They needed they, something I, I that could, would make them crash. I could totally fucking imagine she would say, Basil's an interesting character. You don't really fully understand his motivations, and we have plenty of plans for him in future. He's going to play a really major role in, in future events. And we're really glad everyone's taken a really big interest in Basil. We're, we're fond of him ourselves. Yeah. Un unfortunate. Disney should make. Shouldn't he should just pull the trigger, remake the OT, make Luke black and gay, Anakin is trans, non-binary, beep, boop, Padme is strong female who sleeps with Obi-Wan because he has a real lightsaber. Wow. Quite the fan fiction. Best part of the intro was Ryan saying, and Ryan. And... What? It's usually you that says, and Ryan. Yeah. Well, technically, Pronounced and wards. I don't know, dude. I don't want to say something and they're going to be like, haha, you said the N word. <laughs> gotcha. You get so afraid you got to say regular words. <laughs> dude, I just can't. Yeah, I can't. I don't even know anymore. It's like, what was it? Just a few minutes ago, what did they make me say? I forgot. Andor is becoming more and more a one in a trillion masterpiece with every new release. Yeah, those bricks and screws are looking pretty good by now. Hmm. Not season two, though. We'll see. Dude, even when I was shitting on season one, I was like, season two is going to be amazing. Because it's going to have Wait. Krennic, and it's going to be closer to kind of not having to introduce all of these characters, so it's going to be closer to Rogue Yeah, One. we'll probably get Ben Mendelsohn, um, Stellan Skarsgård, obviously, uh, Forrest Whitaker. Might get Vader. Might get Tarkin. Maybe. Not necessarily not get Vader. Well, I actually think you probably should put Vader in at this point, just because Andor, if you're going to put all the fucking effort into the writing... You might want to put stuff in that Star Wars fans really, really, really want to see. Especially if you're going to do it well. Well, that was also faith my thing. That they would with... handle Vader well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, that was my thing with um, the Acolyte. Everyone for the longest time was like, oh, well, you know, Star Wars Theory and Star Wars fans just in general want to see lightsabers and pew pew. And it's like, we get lightsabers and pew pew. And it's like, I still think it's shit. It's like, it, that's not what we need a good story. We need things to make sense, and it doesn't matter if you have lightsabers or not. Like, sure, it's cool, but well, you understand there are a that. at least section of the fan base that do only need to see lightsabers and pew pew. Well, that's the thing, and that's that it, how it turned on all of them, all those people that claimed that, and they were all so excited because like that was the coolest lightsaber fight we've ever yeah. had. Well, it felt that way with uh, with acolyte, right? Like that fifth episode is garbage in loads of different ways, but it was like, yeah, but there was fights in it. Exactly. It's like, but like these people just don't understand how ironic they are. Love the return of the grift. O three Clone Wars went. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> Someday. 
<laughs> Hope you all watch Nerdonymous Star Wars edit vid someday. We gotten around to that yet? Negative. Dang him. Feel like Doctor Doom is gonna steal Tony Stark's family life like he did to read in Secret Wars 2015. Proper lame, in my opinion. Also, Vermithor versus Palpatine, who wins? Vermithor. Vermithor. He's a huge dragon. The Bronze Fury. Vermithor? Is this uh, Marvel? The Song of Ice and Fire. Oh. It's a, yeah, it's a what if Marvel comic. Come on. What, what was that face for? Come on. you saying? It's a dragon? It's huge. Yeah, how dare you? What? What? I mean, we can we can fight. We can have a fucking Palpatine fight a Marvel character, but we can't have him fight a character from Game of Thrones. No, that's not why I'm saying come on. I'm saying come on because it's a it's a creature. He's just gonna beast control its ass. He's gonna be riding it. You don't know who Vermithor is. I don't. Palpatine doesn't have any fucking Targaryen blood in him, so his mind <laughs> powers won't work. Vermithor will eat his fight. ass. Hmm. He'll just make a force field and probably like confuse his ass and electrocute him. Impervious no. to electricity. What about on the inside? He would have to get in there while he's opening his mouth to breathe fire. And by that time, Palpatine's too toasty. He's going to put up a force shield to block it, but Vermithor is the second biggest and the second oldest dragon in fucking, well, that we know of at least. That's writable in Westeros. Okay, what if he just rips a freaking... Fucking done. You're just going to chomp chomp him. No, bro. You, you, you... Those are like physical strength attributes against a extremely powerful force-sensitive being that like has essentially magic. So then... Are you saying that, let's say, Gandalf the White would beat this... Would not beat this dragon? No, and I would say that kill Gandalf. He'd wipe the floor with him like a bitch. <laughs> it's a fucking Alpine dragon. Alpine Invader, two on one, couldn't take Vermithor. What is so special about this dragon? Just big? He's just fucking cool. That's all. So Godzilla. <laughs> I'm not having a very serious conversation. It's I've in the law. He's got a. They say he's got a cool factor of I think 78. It's like pretty high. <sighs> Especially if we're talking about Sheev, right? If we're talking about Sheev, fucking no chance in hell. No, we're talking, we're talking about, about like pre-Disney Palpatine. Okay, maybe. Yeah. So obviously, why would I talk about fucking? No, I, I thought you were talking about Sheev. creamy Sheev. Hell no. Okay. His cream Bro, wouldn't stand any chance. This fucking not Ray took his ass out. You think a dragon's gonna be able to? You think you have a chance against a dragon? No. The worst part of the acolyte was we saw it after multiple rewrites and after they. Brought in day for reshoots and script changes. Pablo sucks. I don't know about these rewrites. Yeah, I think that's like a new rumor that's out there that it's like, well, they actually went through a bunch of fucking reshoots and reacts. Mm. Like, probably about the same as all their normal shit. Well, like it, it's oh. the it's the problem we have. On one hand, it went through Dave and he approved it, which is terrible. Or on the other, he just let it go without caring about it, which he makes him a horrible custodian for Star Wars. I didn't know so you kind of lose no matter what. Signed off on this shit. Bottom line. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Dave's a pushover and afraid to tell people no. No, he. This is like when you're talking about playing fucking fast and loose with continuity and all this shit. Like, are we? Are we? Like, we're talking about Dave fucking Filoni here. The idea that oh, Dave definitely would have put a stop to them bringing Kiati Mundi and bullshit. He would have. Come on. Everyone has always got a goddamn excuse for this fucking loser, Dave Filoni. Always a fucking excuse. Well, it's just, you know, he's finally, we don't want him in this position. Well, he's just afraid to say no. Like, he, he just, you know, he can't do anything. Well, what, the, what the fuck use is he anyway? Why do you even want him in that fucking position? He's just a bitch like that. Yes, it's queen. always an excuse instead of people just accepting the reality that Dave is just down with it. He fucking is. It's sad. Sad to believe. So who do we have left? Nobody? John? That's it? Well, we'll get a bit out of uh, Andor Baller's season two, boy? but after that, it's gone, yeah. Tony Gilroy? I mean, Gilroy said like the reason he took on Andor was because he loves telling stories and that that would be given more eyes through a Star Wars fandom. So I don't know if that logic would pass through after Andor and mean he would be on more projects. 
I obviously would rather him fucking take on out of him, Favreau and Filoni, I would take him in a million times over. But I mean, to be honest with you, you you already know theory. Like, uh, I assume Ryan's on the same page. We want Star Wars to go dormant. Take a break. Oh, fuck, really? Yeah, leave it alone. Me? Just let it. Let it. Yeah. Every project that comes out, it gets worse and worse and worse. They do more damage to the IP. They yeah, like how many? Not, not honestly, how many acolytes would have to come out before you would have that opinion theory? No, be, that's that's not going to fix anything. It, it's they just need to hire the right person. It's not going dormant. Going dormant isn't going to like help it fucking fix itself. They well, just need to what, hire the right guy. Well, what we mean by going dormant for a few years would be completely and totally stripping down Lucasfilm and like rebuilding it, right? Yeah. Um, not just we have all these people that are still hired and we're still paying all of them and all these things. We just not we're just going to sit on our hands for five to six years. Oh, I see. We need to not only do that, like revitalize everyone who's working there, get people who care, get people who know what they're doing, but also give them time to complete these fucking projects instead of making them rush and then produce shit yeah. in like a year that's awful. I just need to have a good sit down with Bob. Like Bob, what the fuck is going on, dude? What are we doing here? Seriously. What what are you doing with Star Wars? Well, okay, actually here's a question. Ryan, if you were convinced Dave Filoni was the man for the job as in like he he was capable of he had all the best investments, he knew his Star Wars back to front, he was a really good writer. And he was where he is. Do you think we should have been seeing better Star Wars by now? <laughs> a thousand percent. Yeah. Especially okay. with the things he's directly involved in. Like his. No, I do too. Director. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It's like baby. even even though we're advocating the system needs to be changed, I do think if he were the guy for the job, that Star Wars should be looking a hell of a lot better by now. It's like I'm like the, there's always for some reason for Filoni there's some type of excuse involved. Good idea. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm chapping you. it up. Yeah. Exactly. Um, like it's first it's well you know they really need to get Dave Filoni more involved in live action stuff. Okay, he's there. Well, they really need to give him more power to oversee some things that he's not directly involved. Okay, he's there. He literally has like the top creative fucking uh role at the company right now overseeing and giving feedback and making changes to make sure everything stays within the, like the same realm. And it's all part of star Wars, blah, blah, blah. That's his job. And it has been his job for a long time now. Yeah. Um, it's just like, what, what's the next excuse? Oh, well, he's a pushover and afraid to say no. Okay. What, what about in his own show that he did everything on? Yeah. Ahsoka was wank. So like it's if we get another awful. bad season from Ahsoka, and then another bad season from Ahsoka. And then Mando and Grogu is shit. Like, I just, I don't think it's going to last much longer, his reputation. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens, man. Uh, Star Wars man, I bought your profi gin saber and like it a lot. Is Sith Dooku in the pipeline? Long man, I started listening to EFAP about nine months ago, and I'm currently on 194. What a ride. Glad you're enjoying it. It was a long ride. We're on nearly on episode 300 now. That's crazy. Seven years. Seven Six years. years. We're on our seventh year soon. It's wild. You guys do an episode every week? Yeah. That's pretty much. It's 50 per year, so we take two weeks off in the year. <sighs> How does one try out for EFAP? I mean, they kind of don't. We've had... We had the three main hosts, one left, and then we had two hosts for a while, and then third got added in because he was kind of just on every episode anyway. And that's what it's been since. Well, if you ever need Star Wars, man. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll have you for a, oh. a trivia game at some point. You and Ryan, you'll, you'll be on opposite teams. Oh, okay, great. Fucking <laughs> trivia game on lore? Well, we're just going to lose. Hey, man. You know, I have some confidence. I ask you what color Plagueis' lightsaber is, I'm sure you'll nail it. <laughs> hey, if it's anything on the first six films, I'm game. I'm good. If it's on, like, lore and shit, oh, fuck. I haven't read everything Ryan has. The, the, well, the problem is, I imagine whatever Mahler's pulling from is probably going to be primarily yeah. really random shit about the movies. Um, oh. Like, 
But even then, like the movies, I don't know. I don't know the stupid shit. I don't care about like who who was this fucking guy in the corner of the cantina. Like I don't. Yeah. The, so there's like random Star Wars, tri- like in the bunch of like Star Wars trivia books that I've seen throughout the course of my life. There will be questions in there that'll be like, "What's the name of Han Solo's yeah, ship?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. But but then the like the next question will be like. Who's the actor that played this esoteric character that most people don't even know the name of who is on screen at this point in Empire Strikes Back? And it's okay. Who fucking actually knows that? Some people I'm sure do. Hey, hey, Ryan, how many wings do Skatos have? Say that again. How many wings do Skatos have? Four. How the fuck do you know that? It's true. Reasonable? I guessed. I just said four. (laughs) Oh. Ryan got it right. You copied him. That's that's what happened. What the fuck said it before him? And then I changed it to three. I guess. Uh, Wait, why'd you change you it? Know. Your mic's really low, though. So we d- I didn't even hear you say anything. <laughs> oh, you fucker. <laughs> three? What kind of thing has three wings? That, <laughs> that's the joke. What that's kind of the thing? joke. <laughs> that's what makes it funny. Okay, okay. Dumb Geniuses. In a what is the maximum number of womp rats usually cited in a pack? 12. No. Um, 14. The maximum number of womp rats. 20. Eight. My fucking god, yeah, it's 20. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna, re- it's, you know what we have to do? I have to invite everyone and it'll be everyone versus Ryan. I, I don't know how I figured, I don't know how I know that. Like, I've never heard that before. I literally Fuck just, off. I literally just fucking got <laughs> what I thought was reasonable. Bro has like freaking e- Elon Musk's chip in his brain. He's you know, Googling this is setting it. Setting me time. up for like fucking disaster, right? Because I li- literally just randomly guessed that shit. Ow. Now everyone's going to expect that. <laughs> uh, the dumb shit in Ahsoka was the first warning rip. I think wokeism and women destroyed Star Wars. I would really just say that shitty writing and people who don't know Star Wars destroyed Star Wars. But yeah, women as well. What was the name of that super chatter? <laughs> Seven Inch Destroyer. <laughs> uh, was Dave Filoni the only thing left in Star Wars that brought Theory joy in life? Um, I don't know, dude. Come to the Gilroy sides. Enjoy a little bit more Star Wars before it's all over. Yeah, but didn't he say some fucked up stuff about Gina? Probably. Um, obviously, I try to separate out from artists with a lot of the, uh, of the craziest stuff. I mean, you know, some of the best actors in Hollywood end up being some of the worst people ever. Yeah. Uh, is Dave Filoni the Sith we've been looking for? Jokes aside, I like the Soka season one a lot, especially Shin and Balin. Yeah, me too. Not a fan of the construction standard, though. What's a construction standard? I want to be clear, they occupy very little of that season. Nothing meaningful, either. They have like one or two scenes that gets close to scratching at meaningful. But they never quite get there. They were building it well. Yeah. I mean, how many episodes was it? Six? Eight? eight? Six? Was it six? Uh, I'm trying to remember. I thought it was eight. Well, if it was eight, don't you think they could have achieved a hell of a lot more in eight episodes of TV? Uh, yes, absolutely. Let's not even get started again on that finale. Well, I just I guess what I'm saying is like building it well. For me, I'm like building it. But, know. you know, at least it felt like Star Wars somewhat compared to the Acolyte, Acro shit. Um, how do you feel about that, Ryan? Did it feel like Star Wars? I thought Ahsoka was fucking horrific. Compared, um, compared like, to the Acolyte. If you were to take both of them, which one feels more like Star Wars to you? I feel like that's a very loaded question, so um, oh. I, I would, I would say, which one feels more like Star Wars to me? Okay, which one's less shit to you? <laughs> which one is less shit? Ahsoka is less shitty. I said that go. earlier. There's I said by about one standard deviation. All right, cool. Ahsoka is worse than, or uh, right. Acolyte is worse than Ahsoka. All right, but I, we're back to our fucking shit sandwich, piss in your mouth in the desert, fucking discussion right here. Right, so. Like, yeah, you know, it's essentially like how much shit do you want in the sandwich? 
Well, but like you understand the problem here. If we release something that's absolutely dreadful, right? Like you can't even make it, it's not even coherent enough to actually understand character names. It's so bad. And then I go, yeah, but it's not, you know, like, like Acolyte ain't as bad as that. Right. Which one feels more like Star Wars than this? Yeah, Acolyte feels more like Star Wars than that does. Uh, yeah, but I'm looking at this like from a, the, the point of what you might call it. Um, just the characters in general that were in Ahsoka, namely, to be honest, Shin and Balin. That really made it feel like Star Wars to me. Like it felt more like Star Wars because of those two than than anything else. Um, I didn't get any sort of Star Wars anything from the Acolyte. Not one thing. Which is pretty bad considering it's the protagonist is Ahsoka Tano, who's been in Star Wars now for how long? Uh, yeah, you got Anakin saying. Skywalker. Has more yeah. screen time than almost all characters in Star Wars. Well, And, and it, that's weird because in Mando Season 2, the scene with Ahsoka in the forest with Mando felt very legit. So I don't know what happened with Ahsoka where it just felt a little more... Uh, you don't feel as connected. And I think it has to do with the Sabine stuff. Thoughts? I guess I don't really know what you're saying. Um, are you saying that when we see her in Mandalorian six months prior to when we see her in Ahsoka, she's just so sad and downtrodden about Sabine, even though she like hadn't even really interacted with her yet at that point, that that's why, what's affecting her? Like... I don't know. I think that just like when I saw Ahsoka in Mando in that forest when she was talking to Grogu and Mando and all that, it felt like Ahsoka. It felt like she was like a very uh, high. Are you sure that that's how it felt, or is it because that was the first time you'd seen her in live action? Yeah, cool. like to to it me, might, it, it might my be, criticism: we... a lot of these characters in the Mandoverse have been very similar, and that, um, especially with Ahsoka. I, I made a video about this where I essentially said that like Rosario Dawson doesn't feel like Ahsoka. Um, like it doesn't feel like that same character. Obviously it's not going to be the same character we saw in Clone Wars as like a teenager, but yeah. should be fairly similar to the character we see in Rebels in terms yeah. of tone and stuff like, uh, and that's after she's gone through a lot of fucking bad shit, a lot of rough shit we saw her go through. Yeah. Um, but she still has like this energy about her that Ashley Eckstein brings to the character that we've grown to associate with Ahsoka. Rosario yeah. Dawson has none of that. Rosario Dawson speaks in exactly the same way every other person in the Mandoverse speaks, which is with fucking no energy. Mm -hmm. uh, like she's part of a cult like like the Mandalorians are. Right, and the way I kind of... And I totally agree. The only thing that I justify that for is because that she's like a very removed Ahsoka from what she was in the Clone Wars. So she's just a much more like monotone and I almost want to say balanced, if anything. Which is kind of why I brought up Rebels, like, in yeah. my example, you know? Yeah. I feel like she's even closer in line with a Rebels character. Well, well, to, to even add to your point, actually, in Rebels, I feel like she had more of the, the Clone Wars, Ashley Eckstein's sort of emotion that we don't see later on in the, in the actual live-action shows, which is, yeah, you have a point. Totally. Which I'm hoping maybe we can see that, but uh, I don't know. Do you think Ashley Eckstein would have done a good job as live action Ahsoka? Not particularly. Like I don't have an opinion on it, right? Because I I personally have never seen Ashley Eckstein act in anything live action. Yeah. yeah. So I, I can't just be like, of course, you could just throw her in and she'd be fine. Because right. I have no fucking idea. Right. You know? I think she could do it. Like, at least with a guy like Sam Witwer, I've seen him act in other things, you oh, know, well, <laughs> like live action, you know? Yeah, that guy would be fucking phenomenal as a star killer. Um, star Wars man, Empires of the Undergrowth man, and Man Man. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank okay. you, I love waffles. Can't believe you've been subscribed for so long. 50 months as a member. Thank you, Mike. I'm done with Disney Star Wars, says Jake the Movie Geek. I'm reading Star Wars Legends now, thanks to Ryan. Hell yeah, Jake. See, Ryan, you're making them sales. You're making Star Wars sales. Yeah. Making Disney money. 
<laughs> Thank you for joining together again. Really, I love you guys so much. I love Mahler and EFAP. Theory standing up for his opinions. And it's always been so exciting listening to Ryan talking lore. Yeah, dude, I um, I fuck. I, I really want you to make that, that channel. Just talk about lore in general. Like, just, I don't know, go off on a riff on, like, one character and be like, don't even script anything. Just be like, talk about this dude, what you think. I would love that, man. Just make, like, a whole fucking database of, like, a thousand videos of just you explaining lore. No music, nothing. You don't even got to fucking edit anything. Just... I think that'd be great. I mean, he's pretty busy though. <laughs> yeah, like I, what takes I five do minutes? I have a lot going on. Yeah, um, it takes five minutes. But that would be in a in a fucking ideal world. That would be really cool. Would you be interested in? Well, I ask you offline, actually. Cool. Um, maybe you guys could make a Star Grift once a month show. I mean, I'd be down. It's just up to the boys. So. I mean, you know the the plans are probably going to work pretty well, right? Giving us a topic on a major Star Wars event, yeah, uh, that kind of accounts for the lack of time as well. It, it was difficult getting this sorted out uh, on my end. For I'm behind on like everything right now. There is slowly to becoming the first Monday after, and I was traveling. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. No big deal. We, we'll figure it out. Theory is slowly becoming a night of Melvin. Let the hate and wanting of real stories flow through you. I haven't I always? I think I've just been, I think I've just been, um, kind of just defending everything, thinking that they all have a plan of where this is all going. But the only difference people are seeing now is that I have understood that there is no actual plan on the Lucasfilm side. What up, my panda? <laughs> my pandeos. Gonna have to catch this one on replay. I start my regular person job now. Long live the grift. Make that a t-shirt with that beautiful thumbnail. You know the one. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. The one where Ryan's a pharaoh. <laughs> and or season two being ass will be my last straw. Do you know when season two comes out? No. 2025. Okay. But we've got as much of a reassurance on it as we can have. Like Several actors have come out saying that you know, they can't wait for people to see what happens with their characters. And a lot of the praise goes to the writing as opposed to, you know, any particular fucking there's, you know, like the comparison of the interviews, right. For the actors of Andal versus the actors of Acolyte. It's a stark difference. I'm not saying that we got any reassurance in a substantive way, but um, it's, you know, I'll hope for the best, obviously. Uh, like, I, I think that it actually would be, ready to put out in 2025 like or 2024 i think they get it done but i think honestly they're just gonna space it out a little bit because oh, let yeah. this breathe for a little bit people can get the shit out of their fucking nostrils and then release skeleton crew in the winter ish and probably well, in or weeks, early in we, 2025 we get um outlaws and then we'll probably have skeleton crew which we haven't even gotten a trailer of yet um i imagine like november wasn't there a trailer at Celebration? They showed footage, right? Like very little, but I thought there was. Hmm. You might be right, yeah. I don't think it was publicly released, but I think there's like one of those leaked ones out there, I think. Ah, I see. What up, Moose18? Star Wars Theory, did you see Red Letter Media's shout out to you at the end of the Deadpool review? No, uh, no I didn't. But Mahler told me about it behind the scenes before we went live. Yeah. I don't really understand. Um, well, you know, give it a look yourself, see what you think. I wasn't sure what it meant exactly. <laughs> Let's play it live. Oh my god. <laughs> the first time seeing it. <sighs> Where is it? At the very end? Yeah, like if you can see where the credits for this video are, go back like a minute and you'll probably have it. They have credits? Yeah, they're not very long. Yeah! Oh, fucking copyright, goddammit. I'm guessing it's this. I think so, yeah. Oh, the phone's ringing. Oh. Hello? Oh, hello, Star Wars man. 
Yes, yes. Why, that's downright rude. Was that my old roommate, Kevin Star Wars Man? No, it was internet celebrity Star Wars Man, AKA Star Wars Theory. Oh. He said I was too old to talk about Star Wars anymore. Oh. Boy, do I wish Wikipedia could change my birth date. I don't understand. <laughs> uh, I didn't know if you had like made a reference fuck. or something like that, or like made some comment about some old man talking about Star Wars. No, I was gonna say I wouldn't have thought you'd ever say anything about. I would have thought you'd be like, "Hey, a hundred year old should be talking about Star Wars." Fuck it. Yeah, I don't think I ever said anything about being too old or young to. I know. If it, if it's only a reference to the Kiadi Mundi birthday stuff, then I, I think yeah. it's it's a I think it's just a fucking joke. A, a bit. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, I have come back to ask the age old question this time. I need theory to answer. Oh, God. Fuck Mary kills Jabba Wado salacious crew. Well, uh, let's let Ryan take that one. I literally already answered it. We'll answer it again. That's why he sent it again. $10. And for you to say it. I don't want to fucking answer that, man. It's just weird. Kill them no all. Balls. Kill them all. It's a, bit, it's a bit cowardly. It's an easy thing to answer, I think. But and he's asking Fuck. you personally. Fuck off. Fine. I, I'll. Fuck Watto. <laughs> I'll, I'll marry Salacious Crumb and I'll kill Java. God damn. You got to have the reasons in there. Like, obviously, if you want to start with which one you think is the hottest. Ah. Uh, fine, hold on. You actually Googling to see which one you think is the hottest? No, I have a reason. You wanted a reason. I'm giving you a reason. God damn it. Shit. Why is it like this? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Public credits? Republic credits are no good out here. I need something more real. I don't have anything else but credits. No money, no part. That's a pretty sexy outfit. Yeah, I was gonna. Well, I, yeah, I thought you were gonna say that Watto's got an ass on him or something. That was like your basis. I thought he had more of an ass on him before this, but now I'm having to possibly reconsider. But uh, whatever. No parts, no deal. <laughs> no lingerie, no deal. J Jero Star Wars. Let's go. All right. Safe to say we're all happy to see you guys back together. Thank God Acolyte is over. Hope to never see season two. Mm. Anyone watching the Acolyte without any knowledge of Star Wars will still leave the show as badly placed, paced, bland acting, and full plot contrivance and plot holes. Yeah. It's grade school writing with $180 million. Yeah, that was like mm -hmm. the most shocking thing to me that came out of it. I don't even think it's grade school writing. It's just fucking horrible. Corbin drinking the poison wasn't actually in the script. He just hated the show so much he drank a vial of poison. <laughs> this, this is the, the actor's still in hospital. <laughs> yeah. That actor is definitely being typecast into killing himself. <laughs> yep. Uh, we, we have a place, we have a spot for you in Star Wars. No way. Awesome. Well, what's my character? Well, <laughs> the pro abortion Dude. women created a. Out of the four main Jedi team, if you're getting cast as any of them, what the fuck is the pitch? You know, yeah. like, oh, you get to be a Jedi Wookiee that gets killed off screen. Oh, you get to be a Jedi Indara, Master who dies in the first the, scene. We made fun of the Indara fight scene. That was the best one. Yep, it was oh, the best God. one. Yeah. You get a lightsaber. You get to fight a Wookiee and, and, and repel arrows from witches. Uh, how did all the life grow in any 100 years? Trees and forests and all that take time. Also, just got my theory saber today. Right on, Joshua. Hope you enjoy it, man. You're going to love it. The lesbians did it, right? They they make life. Well, through the force. boys, did you hear about the whole thing that the that planet has like some special power? That the planet itself is a virgin? It's, in the that, force it's and, that hole. It's the big old hole, isn't it? And when the moons align, it like creates... Yeah. There's some acceleration, mm -hmm. which then, like, shouldn't the Jedi be extremely powerful and all that, too? <sighs> shouldn't they have been able to sense it? You could tell, like, Soul walks past the stupid hole, 
and it's set up for season two where the stupid hole is going to mean a lot of things and, and i'm just i'm already tired we're getting season two i don't know why people are like we're not getting it we're getting it it's happening we're gonna get season two wouldn't surprise me disney have done stupider shit than that dude they got endless money and they'll probably just write it off like oh well. they literally didn't reunite han luke and leia is there a stupider thing they could ever do than that yeah. it's one of the most insane things they did yeah. and it's something they didn't do <laughs> Yeah. it's weird because it's like there isn't really one thing that goes right with Star Wars it's just kind of like just keep fucking it up like keep making horrible choices I don't know if it's like a running joke like to just hurt us and it honestly does feel like how <laughs> the the bullies who bullied us about liking Star Wars are now the ones in control of Star Wars it truly feels that way it certainly doesn't feel like it's being made by people who like Star Wars no that's the thing it really doesn't my headcanon is Yoda sent all these people to the planet to get rid of them because they're the fuck-ups, and they accidentally fucked this up, too. Yeah. Yeah, just go give them a random mission. Headcanon Yoda is just tripping on death sticks. Hmm. Cool to see Stargrift at this special occasion. A question for y'all three. If you had to smash one, who would it... Jeez. All trying to get me cancelled. <laughs> I almost always stay fairly positive about Star Wars. Some shows I didn't love but still enjoyed watching. This show, however, is so disconnected from anything in all of Star Wars, makes me almost sick. Plagueis was hiding in his goon cave and Chimere was his <laughs> Discord kitten. <laughs> love your content. They'll make it the real rule of two. Fucking lame. Oh, God. Mm. I forgot to pay my Disney Plus subscription. What's up? About Amandla in words of... What? Jay Longbone. Bitch, if the fans were racist, they would not be watching your show. Anyway, the show was missing some Schlerpo. Schlerpo is a pretty awesome character. But uh, he's not oh, in the Shlerpo. live action yet. Well, he's, uh, he's a lot of things, right? It's like a code name. It can be currency. can be a big old boss. could be a location, a building, an item. It's, uh, it's complicated. But uh, Jay Longbone has a lot of wise comments. That's just one of them. Who's Jay Longbone? Is he a YouTuber? She is a great YouTuber. Oh, shit. Yeah, you racist. Fuck. Sexist, too. Darth Maul's line about finally revealing themselves is surely completely contradicted by this, just like Mundi's. Never expected that. Maul, yeah, Maul that idea, also Maul, kind of doesn't have like a real full grasp of like the totality of what's going on with the Sith either. Um, I guess we get more of that after, um, you know, in TCW, Rebels, whatever, but like, especially if you read the Plagueis novel. Maul was very much in the dark about a lot of things actually going on with the Sith. He got like a surface level thing because he was never really meant to be, at least in Plagueis and Sidious's mind, was really never meant to be like the guy. He was basically a weapon that they fucking hone that they could send as an attack dog. Yeah. But like Plagueis knew that Sidious was training him and was like overseeing all of that happening. So it's not like that was uh, Sidious's way to try to eventually take down Plagueis or anything. Well, I think the issue here is that Leslie thinks she knows a shit ton about Star Wars and she's taking liberties to change so much of the timeline of of Legends and I guess what we already thought was uh, was kind of established in there. But um, it's just kind of, it's, I'm just annoyed, dude. Well, I just like, I just thank God that Dave Filoni's there to keep her on the right track, you know? Without him, where would we be? <laughs> that's going to be the actual story of Star Wars that's interesting. It's like, who's pulling all the strings for all these terrible shows? And then the reveal <laughs> is Dave Filoni in the Goon Cave. And it's like, theories it's like, like no. It's like I mean, Ryan, like, we knew all along. We didn't know how to tell you. Wouldn't it be hilarious if this whole thing was just a joke? Like, George Lucas fake sold Disney. Fake sold Lucasfilm to Disney to just come out, like, 10, 15 years later, being like, it was my stories all along, you idiots. <laughs> <laughs> he just, like, wanted somebody else to take the heat for a while. <laughs> yeah, literally. Could you imagine? Oh, funny. my God, that'd be crazy. Holy shit. I I'd probably jump off a bridge. Um, 
I, I'm just going to play the old Republic games for eternity and pretend Disney does, Star Wars doesn't exist. What of the tale of Darth Boogie? <laughs> yeah, you boys know more about that than I do. You don't want to know about Darth Boogie the Wide. Have you ever heard the learn. Have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Tipples the Twisted? <laughs> <laughs> the High Republic story I was looking forward to more than the Acolyte, which was part of a game. I think it's in development. Hell, is Eclipse? It's dead. Oh, you know what? I was stoked for Eclipse. Trailer looked fun. But uh it's, Those fucking know. cinematic trailers reveal so little about anything. Yeah, but they look cool. That's about it. Is yeah. your imagination doing the work? Yeah. Like, take the Old Republic trailers. I love the Old Republic game, but, like, the trailers, those could easily have, like, the, there's nothing in the gameplay that is like that at all in any way, shape, or form, right? No. Um, so if it hadn't been for so much of the cool story elements they were bringing into those trailers, like, what the fuck no would one would we give be a watching? Fuck. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, it's marketing. It's just, they're just pulling people in, like, wow, this is fucking cool, and then they play the game, and they're like, Okay, it's cool, but it's not it's like those anything. damn Instagram ads for some of those games that like look fucking really cool and awesome. And you're like, okay, I'm going to play that. And you play it. It's nothing like what they told you it was. <laughs> Ryan's clearly been hit. Yeah, Ryan's been times. fucking <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Gets everything ready. Tries to play the game. Fuck. Two things. Don't lightsabers need an intact lens to work? And I kind of feel bad for the original writer for Vernestra. Yeah, see, I don't know, because I haven't read High Republic, so I don't know how, if they butchered her character or they didn't. Yeah, no one knows that, because no one read, read those books. Like, I think is a retarded character in the High Republic, too. She's basically just like, oh my god, she's so amazing. She's like fucking, like, if Rey had actually become, like, a Jedi for real, for real, that's how it would have been. She's she's so incredible for her age. She's doing things we've never seen anyone do. That kind of shit. But she does have a... Uh, Weird visions and stuff when she travels through hyperspace, which is why people kept referencing that. Oh, I think you're sick. Oh. Was the Acolyte so bad if we got Stargriff reunion out of it? It is very bad. I agree. You guys, Mahler is a huge Kotor 2 fan. He simps about it a lot and streams it every day. Please let him take out his simping energy here. Also, high rags. I mean, you guys know I haven't played it yet, but I know you want me to. One day, I'll get through KOTOR and KOTOR 2. Well, every time I fire up KOTOR, my system crashes. I don't know if you deal with that. First and I lost all my progress. It's an omen. Literally. Was it episode 1 or 2 where Soul stops Osha falling using the Force and quickly helps her up with a little effort? One. L character development. It's right at the end of episode 1, yeah. Remind me, please. Where we... When she's on the fucking cliff, she's like, I didn't do this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I bereave you. And then she falls, and he catches her. After he says he that um, the twin sister's that that definitely dead, and then immediately is like, no, nah, she's not. Why couldn't he just do that when they were kids, man? With the Because he was a Jedi Knight, and he only knew how to hold up bridges. He didn't know how to hold up people. <sighs> Maybe that actually was the character development. You can catch someone from falling like that. God. What is the way back for Star Wars? Or is it completely dead? Mahler, how would you fix this mess? We kind of went over it. The dormancy thing is just a matter of give us like five years. We're going to strip everything out, put everything back in piece by piece, try and fix everything. Take advantage. First port of call, honestly, is to get a track on every actor we actually have available and who is willing to do shit that we actually want in this universe and see how much we can get from them and how much they'd be interested in and then build stories around that. Because, you know, no way we're going to let this go so far that fucking Hayden dies of old age, not being taken advantage of in any of these stories. It's uh, it's insane, right? Be, you know, start there, go for meaningful things, and, and probably issue a huge public apology just outright and decanonize everything Disney did. Just be like, holy shit, sorry about this. This was a huge disaster, and it was just doubled down and doubled down and doubled down. It needs to stop. Star Wars oh, movies man. and Star Wars... Shows need to feel special again. I think it's um, going to get a little bit worse, but I have a feeling that there's going to be some major giant changes that we're going to be like, this is too good to be true. I just have a feeling. 
I think it's going to get pretty bad, like even worse for a little bit, and then I think it's going to all just be like. Overnight. It's always Fucking darkest change. before the dawn, right? Yeah. No, I have. I just think it's. I think something's going to. Something's going to switch there. It has to. And if it doesn't, fuck me, dude. Theory, it's hilarious watching your descent into madness watching Disney Star Wars. I believe Deadpool is the spark for non-woke movies. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if it is. What do you guys think? Um, I thought it was bad, so... <laughs> I, I don't think it's, it's going to be like... I don't think this is going to like wake people up. Yeah. Um, it is like an this weekend is a is a huge indication. It's like between Spider Man No Way Home, this movie, and the reveal of Robert Downey Jr. It's like, man, you guys really miss those straight white men, don't you? Like that—that yeah. that to me is like <laughs> the funny thing watching what's going on with Marvel the past few years. There's a new Spider Man this weekend. I'm talking about between like what we saw with Spider Man No Way Home. Oh, got you. Uh, like right. I, I started off saying this weekend, then I kind of retracted. Yeah, 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 got it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Just started, but happy to see Stargift, even for only a day. Yeah, cherish us while we're here. My head hurts just listening or talking about the multiverse and the different universe timeline. It's too confusing at times for me. Yeah, this multiverse shit's just kind of, I don't know. And the door is open for Star Wars to be doing crazy shit with multiverse if they want to. Will Between Worlds crap can get anything they want at any time, just waiting for someone to dip their hand into that. And, and arguably... Dave. At this point, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Why? At this point, dude, I would not. <laughs> we just, I, bro, wait. bro, imagine they give us like another version of Luke that never did that shit. You just okay. literally came out of your fucking mouth. You're like, I really fucking hate all this multiverse shit. And I then do. it's like, what about Star Wars? You're like, I'm for it. I, I didn't say I'm for it. I'm saying now that we're in this fucking disaster, after the sequels, after all these shitty shows, Boba Fett, Acolyte, whatever... What else are we going to do? Keep going with these characters? I don't know. Things are... will be good. <laughs> yeah, sure. But why not just now? Fuck it. You want to? Okay, it's all fucked Miss, anyway. Mr. Mr. I got a feeling we got good shit on the way. And then it's like, oh, fuck it. Let's just do multiverse. You asked a fucking question. Yeah, I wouldn't be <laughs> down. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't mind it if they actually did come in and make something that was like from an alternate reality with this world between world shit. Maybe even it's just a fucking vision where they're walking by and they're like, "Oh shit, look, Luke Skywalker's not a bitch." Okay, cool. And we get like a glimpse of that in another like world and a door, and then they keep moving on. Fuck. That'd be yeah, cool okay. to you. Huh? Why would we, why would that like to me that. Uh... That's one of the problems I kind of had with, uh, say, the season end two. of Mandalorian season two. It's like yeah. you get this hint of, OK, we got a guy fighting robots or fighting droids. And then he comes in with dead eyes and people are like, oh, my God, it's fucking Luke Skywalker. For a moment, I saw Luke Skywalker and it had no meaning, no value. At the end of the day, they even fucked all of that up anyway. And any value you could have gleaned from that ended up being completely thrown out the window and it looks stupid and pointless. But at the time, we didn't I, I, know that. I felt like that. Um, but yeah, a lot of people didn't necessarily. But like, that's what I'm saying. Like, why would you want that again when it showed that it wasn't worth shit? I think the whole point of that, seeing that and the excitement around it was like, okay, after they destroyed his character in Last Jedi, he's now back. And yeah, okay, the AI looked like shit, but they're at least trying. And then now they're just going to make improvements on that. And it's going to be better and better and better. That's where we, I think so many people were at. We're like, oh, fuck, there's hope now. But before that, it was like, well, he's dead. Well, I mean, he's Luke is returning. Like, in either this Mando Grogu movie or Dave Filoni's fuck, like, he, they're 100% going to bring him in. Yeah. Like, no sure. doubt. Yeah. But I I don't know how people could, well, just I don't know how people could be tricked into, like, embracing that again. How, with how sad seen. and pathetic is it that I and we many of us are now at this point where we would love to just see a glimpse of them walking by a fucking door in the world between worlds bullshit time space continuum where we could see a glimpse of Luke just a glimpse of him not being a destroyed castrated watered down Jake Skywalker like how is that not insulting though it's like pandering like they give you is. that to shut you up you know it is well I wouldn't shut us up but uh, <laughs> 
it would at least well, be like, shut you up in uh, the sense that you would be complimenting them for having done that when it's nothing. I don't know if I'd be complimenting them, but I'd be like, this is actually fucking cool. It'd be nice to see them. Nice to see our characters again. That's all I want. I, I, I would see them. I'm not going to lie. I would honestly rather have a Star Wars series set 200 years in the future full of characters that we've never heard the name of before that's just fucking well-written, well-executed, a cool story told in the Star Wars universe than I would a random yeah. Luke Skywalker moment like that. Well, of course. I'm not saying we have to have one without the other, but I'm just saying it would be nice oh, to be able oh. to see our characters again in like, not some bitch-made form. Because what else do we have? Like, they're never going to be able to fix Luke in the sequels. It's dead. It's done. They destroyed him. They're never going to be, f be able to fix. Well, Boba Fett. I don't know. They... That's it's it's tough. So it's it's like if you give us that alternate reality or another universe or some shit, fine. At least we get to see cool characters, and I can forget all about this other timeline where they're just bitch made. All right. But what I mean, else does it help what that much options? when it's the timeline, like the primary timeline for Luke's I, stuff? Yeah, no, I know. Look, it's not how I would have written it. Written it, but it's like, what else, what other option do we have? Like, what what option do we have to kind of take the situation we're in and turn it into, holy fuck, there's our old characters again, like Boba Fett being a badass, Obi Wan being competent and cool, Luke being Luke. And all these other characters, and you know, well, I mean, if we're, <laughs> being dead. <laughs> if we're using multiverse, then I assume we can use stuff like it was all a dream. Oh, well, that'd be great. I mean, I would rather that than I've, looking I've through a window. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, uh, I wouldn't want to j just like you know, random Ahsoka adventure, and she's in the world between worlds, and she sees a window, and she opens it up or something, and it's fucking Luke being cool, and then she closes it. Uh, that sounds really weird. I would way prefer. He wakes up having had a nightmare at the Jedi Temple, and we make it definitive that seven, eight, and nine are a vision that Luke had, and that's that. Like I would way prefer that than well, even course. involving the world between worlds. I fucking hate that whole thing in concept. Of course, I, I mean, I would inv I would rather them come out and say, "Hey, the sequels is is just you know it's kind of a side story that we we made for fun, and now we're going to continue the real timeline or whatever," which would be essentially just another multiverse kind of thing at the end of the day, but, um, it's just kind of all, um, just kind of fucked now. It's like, if they wanted to fix Luke, they got to go in between six and seven. But as Ryan was saying, I would love it for them to go, you know, 500 years into the future or a thousand plus years into the past, create a whole bunch of new characters and incorporate that somehow into the timeline. I mean, ultimately, none of this is a preferential event over any other. We really just want it to be well written, whatever it is. Yeah. Right, like even if they said we're gonna make a TV show about a mouse droid and that's it, like, well, I mean, it's not. I wouldn't consider that a good choice. I'm just saying that as long as it's well written, I guess <laughs> it'll probably have better dialogue than Ahsoka and the Acolyte. Yeah, that's true. I don't think there's anything. That, yeah, I, I think the Acolyte is probably not even for Star Wars. I think, I truly think it is one of the worst shows in existence. I agree, on, especially on if you put it on when you put on a sliding scale for like how much they spent versus what you got. I I think you can definitely make that argument. Yeah, yeah. Even if they didn't spend much on it, I'd still be like, this is probably the worst show I ever written. I don't know. I don't think there's one that's worse. I can't think of one. Mahler's watched a lot of bad things. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, one of the obvious Game of Thrones season eight. That was a catastrophe. Should right. we? Yeah. What's worse, the acolyte or season eight of Game of Thrones? It's tough to acolyte. compare. Like, it's a little bit tough because it's tough to analyze Game of Thrones season eight without talking about all of the characters that were so important and you're so familiar with, who's yeah, like things completely got destroyed, and also season six and seven go a long way to destroying them as well. Mm -hmm. It's like a tough thing to compare. But wouldn't you argue that Star Wars is the same thing because it's, it doesn't have shows before it, but has movies before it? And like yeah, but precedent. a lot of what damage Acolyte does can be compartmentalized easier than Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones it destroyed its thematic yeah. value throughout every season in that last one. Yeah. And then on an individual character level, it fucking decimates each of them. Um, so the plot is completely fucked. You know, did they, like, did they forgetting just the Iron Fleet and stray stuff. away completely from... 
the novel and the script on on season there is no novel for that no yeah because it hasn't been written yet the last two books in a song of ice and fire are not written uh have not been written uh probably will never get written um so once they got about halfway through game of thrones they started really having to start delving into a couple of things that they weren't quite sure of that they had an outline for but that the novel hadn't been written yeah i've wow. never liked the whole like they didn't have a they guide had it and that's why like, but even like, if right even yeah. if we all as audience members had an idea of how to end it that would have been weird it's like someone saying there's no door for them to walk through and so they take a gun out and shoot themselves in the head like you, you <laughs> didn't have to do that yeah yeah and like 1000 and i think that's one of the reasons the books are taking so long is because the bad reception to it when a lot of the major plot points that happen, I think will still happen in Song of Ice and Fire. And I think George, with so many people being like, oh, I know that like Winds of Winter and Dream of Spring, like, I know there's going to be so much better. It's going to make so much worse. It's going to be amazing. Um, George would never do these things, but I think those things were planned out. But I, I do personally think it would be much more well, well written yeah. and properly achieved and make a lot more sense. But I think because of that, I think George feels like his legacy is better left right now if he never writes another book oh god you know um i just saw this pop up seems there's a petition going on now to get a season two a petition <laughs> how, many, of how, many fan signatures? Campaign. how many signatures a fan that's a fan mm-hmm. campaign which means hashtag renew the acolyte or something right mm. All five of the fans. Yeah. Yeah, no, you you'd have to be delusional to think that the acolyte was even remotely well received. It simply wasn't. There's a lot of people online that think it's like the best Star Wars ever. The thing is when when people fine. say stuff like TLJ was well received, there's much more of an argument to be made because that was a huge split and that was back when Star Wars fans I think were much more willing with good faith to accept whatever Disney was willing to put out. Right. But I mean you guys have noticed right the culture surrounding Star Wars has become so almost apathetic just oh god here they come with another fucking mess. Yeah. I don't know guys it's it's all it's, it's unfortunate. Um, I wish we could be super excited about it and I wish there were like competent people that actually cared about the franchise writing it and getting paid all these millions to do it and i don't know why it's not it's it's i still don't understand i don't get it my head hurts just listening or talking about the multiverse and the different universe timeline it's too confusing yeah how would you feel about a like a multiverse in star wars well i wouldn't want that I think yeah, I one time like, <laughs> we just had that massive conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's why I was like, why is he fucking asking this again? Because <laughs> well, you reread that super chat again. That's why I was. Yeah. Did I read it again? Oh, yeah, Jesus yeah. That's Christ. the one that started off that entire conversation. So oh, my bad. <laughs> as bad as Acolyte is, it's still not top five worst Star Wars things. The Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker, Kenobi, Ahsoka, and Rebels are all worse. It's worse than Ahsoka. Bro, I think Acolyte is worse than all of those. I think it, I can entertain the argument that TLJ, TROS, and Kenobi are worse than it, but I don't think it's like settled. But Ahsoka, I don't see how you could argue Ahsoka's worse than Acolyte. You can you can argue that some of these things do more damage to yeah. Star Wars as a whole, uh, but I think that's a different argument than how bad is this piece of material. And I think if you're just talking about that, how bad is it, how poorly written, poorly executed it is, I think Acolyte takes the cake. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's the most damaging thing overall, even though they are really setting like a completely different framework for the, the conception of Anakin and like all these different things. But with that being said, it's not more damaging to Star Wars as a whole than something like Kenobi or some of those sequels. Yeah, you have a point. I, I would say, yeah, eh, I would say Kenobi or The Last Jedi is probably the most damaging to Star Wars. Yeah. Not to say that this doesn't do any damage. It does. For sure. Right? But for sure. Kenobi felt like the TLJ full prequel fans. Yeah. Just as a comic person, them saying the Marvel Universe is 616 when most of the inspiration comes from the Ultimate Comics irks me. What are the Ultimate Comics? Is that a different timeline? 
It was kind of wild when we got, was it in Multiverse of Madness that they gave the reveal of 616? Oh my god, yeah, the dumbass film being like, yeah, the comic kind of continuity is... To hear that. Yeah. But it didn't make any fucking sense. That That is like permanently pissed off, Gary, because it, it, the only way you can try and make it make sense is if, if it essentially kills the comic continuity, it replaces it. Which is insane. Can't coexist, obviously. Wait, so what? These timelines can't coexist? No, it was like they gave specific labels to timelines, and they gave the label of the timeline to the sacred timeline the same label that the comic one gets. As if to say, you know, the comic one and the animated ones of the paint universe, like they can all coexist in a giant multiverse. When you start na labeling them, and the, the actual number code that the comic one gets is given to the MCU. It's like you're saying they're the same slash, you know, a lot of people were like, is it, what, what are you trying to say? Because they can't coexist. They, they tell different stories. Please do a skit of Sidious Force Lightning. What do you mean? <laughs> do a skit. Do a skit. Do a skit. Uh, all right. Uh, this oh, is my Force problem. Lightning Leslie Headland. That's what that meant. Oh, uh, this is my problem. A lot of the great Deadpool comics are very serious. People forget this is a broken man and has a moral conflict, not just jokes. They nail it in the first one. The second one, I think they start to fray at the edges, and then the third one, they didn't really have this. I don't think they were ready for how successful the first one was going to be, <laughs> to be honest. Like, uh, hmm. I... I, like Ryan Reynolds was very passionate about it, worked for a really long time to get it done. I had to convince everybody to fucking do it. And they're like, all right, let's fucking take a flyer. Well, Jimmy, Seventy he million leaked, dollar budget, whatever. He, he leaked the test footage, right? Exactly. That's um, a bold move. Because that first one was like a 70, 80 million dollar budget movie, maybe even less. And it made like almost eight hundred million dollars worldwide. Wow. And so they're like, hey Ryan, let's do another one. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's kind of how that happened. Literally. Well, and they're probably just going to keep Hugh Jackman around now. I'm not sure. What was with that thing he uploaded on Instagram where he's just laughing at his uh, phone? So all the comments were like, that's him reading all the scripts for him uh, going into Wol being Wolverine for the next 20 years or whatever. It's possible. Unless it's the timeline where Tony Stark, <laughs> Tony Hawk, uh, becomes Iron Man. I don't see how using the same actor who is beloved hero is going to be used as a villain. Well, they're probably just going to make us empathize with the villain now. There's a there's a million ways they could go about doing it. I just think it takes away from doing an actual Doctor Doom with an actor that could play Doctor Doom as opposed to Iron Man going through some kind of journey that turned him into Doctor Doom. I don't know. And whoa, I and whoa, whoa, whoa. It's... Sorry, sorry. wait, that's what this is. Well, it could. Be. I'm not 100 percent sure exactly what story they're telling. I just don't. I don't think they're going to have Robert Downey Jr. play Victor Von Doom. That seems unlikely. Instead, being a Tony Stark has something go wrong, or maybe he fails to save the world, and so he gets jaded and and powerful and becomes Doctor Doom in that universe. Whatever the fuck they're doing, it or feels Doctor Doom is like literally mind controlling. Tony Stark. That too. Yeah. Like, like this, like this. That, those, and those are possible things with what we've seen before, you know? There's those are different things they could do. But like, you know, seeing the reveal is it's just the peak of desperation. But um a lot of people are really excited for it, where I was just really like, damn, it would have been cool to have had any other experienced actor playing a very straightforward Victor Von Doom from the source, you know what I mean? Instead I of just, fucking around with the multiverse. You generate so much hype and interest, but it also makes it extremely more complicated to land it right if that makes sense um like taking your most iconic actor who plays your most iconic hero in the mcu bringing him back to play one of the most iconic villains in a multiverse event there's ways that could really go wrong <laughs> you know well, yeah and when you have yeah. the multiverse it could just be anything like who knows yes. exactly what they're gonna do i, I personally think it's going to like, my guess is that Doomsday, it's going to, like, show that his motivations aren't, like, evil necessarily. He's trying to, like, save the multiverse in some way, but he's going about a fucked up way. And eventually he's, I think maybe he'll end up teaming up with them in Secret Wars or something. Who knows? Interesting. I thought they were just going to, like, tell the story of Doom, but 
played by Robert Downey Jr. That could be it too. We don't know. I suppose that we're, could be it. We're literally just speculating. So yeah, that's kind of actually really cool though is that he could turn. It. I didn't know someone could turn into Doctor Doom. Like I thought he has his own. Well, story. I mean, it could be Doctor Doom steals a fucking Iron Man suit as well, right? That's like a a comic book story. Yeah. Really. Yeah. This, like I said, anything could be anything. That's wild, man. To be honest with you, whatever they say it is right now could not be what it is because they haven't even started a script. I don't think they've got a completed one. They certainly haven't started filming. So who knows what it'll end up being. That's cool. Uh, Mates, I'm not too fond of RDJ being Doom because I think it will tarnish his legacy as Iron Man. Doom also wears armor. They should have had someone else like Jason Isaacs or John Rhys Myers. Jason Isaacs could have been cool. Um, I think there's a bazillion actors that could have been given the opportunity with this one, but there's an up-and-coming Jeez. actor named Jonathan Majors. They could have taken a shot on him. <laughs> Fuck, dude. He would be good for Kang, I think. Dude, Jason Isaacs oh. would have been unreal. I would love to see him in something. Wait till my father hears about this. Mauler, tell Theory to watch Firefly. Theory, you'd love Firefly. It's just a season. Go watch it. All right. Okay. I was just going to say, it really goes downhill in season two, so <laughs> be careful. Hey, oh, Hey, what'd you think of Henry Cavill? Oh. I thought it was fuck. Yeah, don't let really spoil it. But I thought it was fucking awesome for a little cameo thing. Yeah. Yeah. You think it works? I think it could work if they decided to do it. We got yeah. two seconds of him in one line. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that actually did sound a lot like how he should sound. It did. Um, it was good. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to say he's too tall, he's the same height as Hugh Jackman's. So. Bro, how fucking funny was it when they went into that first one where he's like. Comic accurate. That was that, that fucking made me laugh. It just yeah. kind of shut everyone up where they're just like, he should be shorter. It's like, well, yeah, I guess. How would you fix Star Wars if you had the power to do so? D Canon Disney. What time period would you focus on? I would like to see the Vong or even something in the future like the legacy comic. I mean, we've answered this a few uh, times, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we've gone into detail. Uh, do you Brits say detail or detail? I say detail, but I figure all some people really say detail. Count, though, because he's like kind of been Americanized because of all the people that he streams with all the time. Yeah, all the dirty ass Americans I've spoken to over the past however long has de-Britified me. That's why you say boogie instead of boogie. To be fair, I've always said boogie. Yeah. Detail. You're not proper. Detail. You're not proper British anymore. No, I'm not. Welsh, so no, <laughs> I'm not proper Same British anyway. Difference. What's the most proper? London. Yeah, like upper crust fucking English is probably the stereotype. I used to be more proper. Now it's full of fucking migrants. How do you do? How do you do? Band of brothers, style imperial infantry story. How would you guys have felt if Tupac <laughs> would have went in his second interview and got the mace roll? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've heard that. I've never, like, I've heard that story. I've never necessarily seen, like, any confirmation or whatever. But, yeah, I heard that they wanted Tupac to play Mace Windu. I don't know mm. if that's true or not, though. Yeah. My theory is that wasn't Plagueis, but a do doink from Signs. <laughs> Wow. It's been a just long a, ass time since I watched that. Just a stray doink <laughs> running around. Doinking. That's hilarious. Using RDJ as the main villain, I can't see it working well since the fan base will always see him as Iron Man. Unless it's the timeless timelines where Stark is Doom. But what, what the fuck? There's timelines where Stark is Doom? There's RDJ timelines for everything. Man. Literally every possibility. Wolverine was Magneto. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Fucking right. Basil was Master Soul. Oh, God. All right. In the comics, he came back from a drop of blood. That's crazy. Oh, there you go. That's crazy. Wolverine came back from a drop of blood? Well, I mean, that opens up some questions, right? Like, How did what... he regenerate all the adamantium? And... It's not even that. I was going to say, if, if he can come back from one drop of blood, can we make multiple ones? Yeah. Which drop of blood is the specific important 
core part of Wolverine. Bro, that's like literally cell from Star Wars. Has from, to be uh, blood from the dick. That's the only like that dick is blood. the yeah. <laughs> dick blood. The fuck, man. Nutsack blood. Uh, my three favorite personalities enduring this hell with me. Thank you all equally and differently for not letting us face abject ruin alone. Well, thanks, old man rising. We're here with you. Oh, apparently inside. the drop of blood thing was Deadpool, not uh, Wolverine. But, I mean, same question, obviously. Kind of makes more sense, yeah. yeah. So who has faster healing, Deadpool or Wolverine? Wolverine. At least going by the movies. But if you chop off Wolverine's arm, I guess if he didn't have adamantium, uh, does it regrow back? Yeah, I guess. I think so, yeah. I mean, we saw, obviously, Deadpool had an arm and his legs chopped off in his movies. And you see him grow back. Yeah, yeah you see the little, yeah, you do see the little ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And his head. So, yeah, I guess. All right. Um, right and wrong, the bad guys in Logan put the cure in light corn syrup. That caused him to lose his healing factor faster. You know what I really... How I would have enjoyed uh, Deadpool and Wolverine? I think if they just... If they just had him not turn into a skeleton and freaking he had like a little bit of tissue left and uh, Deadpool went in and injected him with like some giant ass syringe and just healed him. And then I they went on... Greatly maybe, like a, like, the maybe like a 20 minute story. You, you liked it? I, I greatly enjoyed the opening scene of like, don't worry, we're not gonna fucking dig up, we're we're not gonna like uh, ruin your memories of this fucking great moment or whatever. And then to see him literally like digging him up, and then the entire in sync fight like, yeah. with his bones, I actually really liked that scene. Yeah, that's wild. But it, I don't know. It, it, I think it could have been cool. Like, hey, okay, hey, you're you're back, you're healed, and he just like waits for him to heal, and then they go on maybe like a twenty minute journey to essentially. I don't know, cure his body of the adamantium Deadpool poisoning. Deadpool is just, like, moving him into the passenger seat, and he can't really move yet. He's just sit there and listen to fucking Deadpool. Like, he can't do anything to stop it, and he's just getting frustrated. That could be fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A show of Mog and Basil is the next GRR. Oh, God. Welcome back, boys. What's up, Mike? Say his name. Yeah, you say his name. <laughs> Do you think Michael Jackson would have been a good Jar Jar like originally intended? Fuck yeah. Um, maybe. The obvious play is to make an Acolyte parody, but in full earnestness and make it good, no humor, just call it a parody so you can skate by the fair use, but to create a project that ends up being Venomous and Plagueis. Venomous and Plagueis. Um, well, Venomous? That'd be interesting. I mean, it wouldn't really make any sense, but... No. What, like, Chimera is going to be the next Venomous? No. God. Yeah, so Venomous was a essentially an apprentice that Tenebris had been training outside of Plagueis without Plagueis' knowledge yeah. um, when he had doubts about Plagueis' ability to carry out the Sith Imperative. Um, that Plagueis didn't find out until after he had already killed Tenebris, um, and Venomous at that point did not even know that Tenebris was dead at the hands of Plagueis. But he keeps him alive to do a bunch of fucking midichlorian experiences, uh, experiments on him. He essentially lobotomizes him and uh, just fucking runs experiments to try to manipulate midichlorians and shit. Poor guy. I can't wait to play Darth Vaccine in Acolyte Season 2. My force powers include force masking and social distancing. Health Minister of Belgium. Darth Vaccine. <laughs> I have a bad feeling the skeleton crew are going to be more akin to Ewok adventures movies than actual Star Wars. You know what? I don't have... I don't know, man. I don't have that bad of a feeling about it because I don't think there's any, like, characters that they could destroy or mess up. It's just a bunch of kids going through space. It's probably going to be nothing of note. It's probably just yeah, going to come out and nobody's going to care. Yeah, most likely. I wouldn't expect a whole lot from it. I'd be surprised if my watch parties hit a thousand views on those. 
Theory Man, you, Mahler, and Ryan have a great dynamic, and I'm happy watching, listening at work. More Deadpool and Wolverine talk, less Wackolite. Much love, guys. P.S. Rossi has infinite money. All right. He gave five gift subs early on. Yeah. Rossi's extremely generous, dude. He's uh, very supportive. What's up, Branson? Any good updates for Vader 2? Mm, no. So every month we're just getting closer and closer, and we'll probably have the full product in spring of 2025. Now the only question is, will I release it in spring of 2025, or will I wait until um, summer or fall to release it so that you don't have to wait as long for episode three? You should I release it on the same day that they release the Mandalorian and Grogu movie. <laughs> Yeah. Release it the same day That's season really two of the Acolyte movie. drops. Oh, fuck. There you go. Funny how Marvel realized they need to course need to cater to their primary audiences for success, yet KK remains stubborn. It's almost as if most of Lucasfilm employees are like the people from the Olympic opening ceremony. Well, and my question is... Drag queens? If, if fucking Marvel can course correct and see and you know make jokes and stuff in Deadpool... Does that mean there's hope for Star Wars to kind of see and be like, all right, hey, let's uh, switch it around here? I don't know. From what I've heard, like, although they're both under the Disney umbrella, the companies are run very differently. Um, yeah. And there are certainly some things that Disney will come in and say, hey, we need this from up top. But in a large part, I, I don't think that they're, I don't think they have as much day in day out control over these things as we like to imagine um marvel's being run differently than lucasfilm is period they're prioritizing other things they've acknowledged that they fucked up whereas lucasfilm doesn't care and they're not going to acknowledge that that's kind of what i've heard yeah i could believe that I have a pitch for a Star Wars show that's a scolding commentary on the police that focuses on a sect of Gamorrean Jedi abusing a bunch of Jar Jars. The show could be called Jedi Pig. The <laughs> fuck? Stupid. <laughs> the Return of the Grift. Disney is doubling down again with the new Acolyte books. Oh shit, are there books? And it looks like they're coming for the OT next. My only hope is that Disney tanks the IP enough that George can buy it back for cheap. George doesn't <laughs> want to make Star Wars anymore, guys. He doesn't want to do it. Books. Um, they are doing like a Jackie and Yord book or something like that. They're doing like some Acolyte tie-in novels, but they also just announced, Lucasfilm Publishing just announced a few hours ago, that they're doing a series of books like set in the OT era focused on like Mon Mothma is the point of view character for one of them. Saw Gerrera is the point of view character for one of them. Like something else. Ah, okay. It's going to sell literally dozens of copies. <sighs> Unless they buy it all themselves. Uh, got the Satil Profi recently. This is a work of art. I'm glad you like it, man. It's a very popular one, actually. Darth Maul Shadowhunter. Does Sith training and Jedi recruiting kids as Padawan much better than the Acolyte? Yeah. Shadowhunter's awesome. Anything pre-Disney does a way better job at explaining George's story because it was kind of overseen by George, and if not, people who George appointed. Like Darth Maul Shadowhunter is a fucking awesome book. It has a really cool cover, too. It's um, dope as fuck. I remember buying that when I was a little kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a fucking... With the two, it the came main out thing. like a... That's the one where he kills a hut and everything, right? In that one? I think he does kill a, a fucking hut crime lord or something. But yeah, that is an awesome book for anybody that is interested. When did that come out again? I think it must have been like 2000. It was, yeah, it was fairly quickly after Phantom Menace. I think it was like 10 or 11. I, my, I would imagine it was like 2000 or 2001 when it was probably released. Yeah, November 27, 2001. Yeah, right. I was 11 years old. Wild. Theory, show the boys some Vader 2 stuff. We want to hear you guys talk about it. 
if there's a scene um, about it since it's one of the biggest fan projects ever on this scale. Um, yeah, I don't know. Are you guys interested? Do, what, what do you want to know? Say that again. Show the boys some Vader 2 stuff. I don't know. I can't really show you anything. It's yeah, just, I was going to um, say, aren't you like all the stuff that gets released for that is for like members and stuff first and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But we usually release stuff every like one to two months, just some photos and screenshots and whatever. But um, I mean, story wise, it. I'm more excited for episode three than I am two. It's like it's like, you know, it's it's such a long haul because episode one and two kind of just t episode one is just like exposition. Episode two is like, all right, we're getting to the part where things are going to get fucking crazy, where there's like talking and fighting and the story just blends together and it gets really interesting. But two is 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 kind of like setting up where three will just I feel like people's minds will be like, oh, holy shit, this is wild. I'm actually in interested to see what you both think, but uh, I don't know if you have time to read it. It's quite long. Like it's it takes probably like about two and a half hours to read straight. Mm. Nice. The main thing is to protect these characters to make sure they will still continue to live in the way that you created them. KK is not protecting the characters. Keep fighting for Star Wars theory. We'll do. K-pop music in end credits is Pat Peak to see. Oh, fuck. Yeah, what'd you guys think of the music? It was horrendous. What if Elon is supporting Gina to hurt Disney's stock price and then he'll only buy parts like Star Wars or Marvel? By the way, Jedi Knight Jedi Academy is my canon. Disney Star Wars is like a bad alternate universe compared to that. Uh, the second half of your chat is fucking glorious because Jedi Knight... Jedi Academy is amazing. Jedi Jedi Outcast is amazing. Um, the Elon Musk stuff. If you're just like ho hoping and like well wishing, that's one thing. But I just don't think there's any uh, evidence necessarily suggests that. I think if uh, if Elon really wanted to get in the entertainment industry, fuck, it'd be way easier to start his own studio right now um, than it would be to literally liquidate all of his fucking assets to buy Disney. Yeah, but I get the impression that Elon is like very fucking vindictive and he will do whatever Certainly. he needs to do to destroy his opposition, even if that means like making a financially bad decision because he know he'll just like you know would have been the perfect time. You know what would have been the perfect time to do something like this? Literally a few months ago when he had somebody who was in a fucking proxy war with Disney, Nelson Peltz, that he publicly like went out and appeared with to support him and Elon didn't buy fucking any stock at all. That could have been his opportunity to start to do something like that, and he fucking didn't. Like, yeah, why not? Why like, like come on. Like, if that was going to happen, that was the literal perfect opportunity. And Elon talked a lot of shit, but he didn't take any action with it. So I don't know why people would have it in their minds that this is some grand conspiracy plan when he had a perfect opportunity to do it. He passed. Maybe he's doing shit behind the scenes. Maybe. Yeah, I think Skelly Crew looks like Goonies. Ryan was yelling at Theory with the anti feloni rant. I, I was know. yelling at was anybody good. who continues to like make excuse after excuse for like Filoni. But Filoni's a savior, dude. He's <laughs> gonna save all of us. Well, I, I say we kill him and see if he fucking comes back from the dead three days later. That'll be confirmation. That'll be proof, yeah. Hey, Theory, I work at Disneyland. Can I hang out with you there? I can get you in. I love Star Wars and your videos. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm in Manila. LA. Yo, Theory, just bought my first Theory Sabers. Another fantastic profit to add to my collection. Thanks for always being a pillar in the community. Hell yeah. Yo, see Aston, make sure you uh, stay tuned for this. Uh, yeah, this weekend's announcement. Hopefully, if everything goes right, that's why I'm taking my time with it to perfect this thing. And then uh, we're also revamping the site as well. It's, it's getting an, oh, a new look. 
but it won't affect the operation of the of the site at all. You can still buy stuff. How much you want to bet they mind wipe Kiadi Mundi not only to forget his birthday but to forget how the <laughs> ship encounter is? I was laughing at the idea that they mind wipe him so he thinks he's a lot younger. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, could you imagine? And then, like, they color his beard, but then they forget one day and it goes white, and they're just like, shit. Well, what's <laughs> happening to me? Yeah. <laughs> Literally goes gray in just a short amount of time. Oh, it's wild compared to his age. And his head, too, grows longer and thinner. It's like someone just took a rolling pin and went. What do you think about Mando Season 1 having him use carbonite on his bounties? When season when Star Wars Episode Five stated it isn't used on people, thank you for the Dave hate. Yeah, but I, that's later I, with Mando. Yeah, and it obviously worked. So well, they probably I don't. Yeah, I don't, also I don't think the implication is that carbonite freezing has never been used on people before. I think the implication is this isn't calibrated to do shit like that. Um, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Because we have seen a lot of other stories as well that do use carbonite freezing. Well, I think Vader made that kind of popular with, uh, well, I guess to the galaxy, Jabba made that popular. Like, could you imagine how much street cred Jabba probably got all around the galaxy being like, dude, holy shit, there was this guy he had a bounty on who didn't pay him and he just literally froze him and made him wall art. Yeah. It's freaking crazy. Love seeing the boys back together. What up, dude? Boogie can save Star Wars. Favreau and Whitworth are the only ones I trust. I don't know, dude. I feel, you know what pisses me off about all these dudes that work at Lucasfilm? It's like none of them are saying anything, and that's kind of the point where I'm getting at now. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, okay, like Whitworth knows a shit ton, and like he's been around since the George days, but like, why isn't he saying anything? Like, why, why isn't he just being like, yo, like, what the fuck is this? Like stepping up. Like, I don't know. I just. I feel like if I was there, I'd be like, yeah, I would be 100% saying, what What are it's, you doing? You know, it's. I, I would like to think that I would do that too. It is tough to put yourself in the situation where your job, your livelihood, all this your stuff might be on the line is, as well, you know? Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's easy to say, I would say this or I would say that, but who knows what it's actually like for the people there. Um, yeah. For me, I don't really trust John Favreau with Star Wars from what I've seen with him. Uh, I think Sam Witwer is a great voice actor. I think he knows a lot about Star Wars, but I've like I, I've never seen anything creatively from him that would be like, well, here's the guy who should run it. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I feel like he knows a lot about lore. But uh, I guess they don't have the liberties that we do as YouTubers where you know, we can't necessarily get fired by someone we've it's like it's, that's only if we go against YouTube guidelines, essentially. So. But even then, we still have our following, so it's like, just go somewhere else. Dave is a traitor to Star Wars. Ryan radicalized me. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Jens. We need a Star Wars man comic with Reva and the villain. They got to almost completely clean house at this point. I don't think the sequels could be topped, but here we are. Love you guys. Ryan knows all the lore because he has a pornographic memory. <laughs> I wish I did. Ryan out autismed himself this time. <laughs> yeah, that was so stupid. Who'd win, Anakin or Oneness Jason? Mortis Anakin or Oneness Jason? Oh, fucking Mortis Anakin, dude. Yeah. I love Jason Solo, though. Jason Solo's core skills are probably more... <laughs> immense and well-rounded than anything we've seen because all the studies he did with different um with different adepts of the force and shit elon could afford lucasfilm given the damage kk and her clowns have done but i feel like disney would rather kill the ip than sell to him probably well fuck no dude they're they're there to make money i'm sure if he offered them like 40 billion dollars for lucasfilm they'd be like all right yeah maybe like it's something that outlandish but I, I don't think that uh, even with these new things doing really poorly, I think people really underestimate the inherent value and value in the future of simply having 
the first six fucking movies, the rights to those movies, the distribution, the merchandise, like everything involved with that. I think people truly underestimate how much value just inherently that has. And the idea that even if they have lost money on some of these other projects, that that would make them turn around and sell it like that. I think it's very short sighted and naive. Yeah. No, I agree. That's why he would need to make them some massive offer. That's just like, all right, <laughs> sure, dude. It would take us probably like a hundred years to recoup this cost. I'm a proud owner of a $500 theory saber. Great back scratcher. Not going to lie. Hell yeah, dude. That's what we made them for. <laughs> Check out Space Ica's Acolyte Review. Best review. Phelan Skull and Shinhathi are the only two cool characters Disney Star Wars has ever made. By the way, any sales on sabers now? Shinhathi model? Um, well, we got the one year coming up. or The, the eight year anniversary of the channel coming up on the 31st um i was debating on doing a sale i don't know if i will because there's also an announcement coming for the stuff we've been working on for months which i want to put a sale on as well so it's like i don't want to do too many sales but um i'm conflicted well what do you guys think i should do what's your view on sales mm. the more the better okay. yeah um I don't know. I was returning a text message. Um, yeah, you've been fucking jerking off on your phone. Oh, yeah. I'm a busy man. I have been jerking off. The aqu aqu aquadike? Oh, Jesus. Fuck. Oh, yeah. I have you guys talked about the RLM thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, pretty much. What? Red what letter media. Oh, right. Why is that a fucking thing? I don't. Jesus. Someday Ryan will figure out these shows were written to troll him specifically. The rest of us are just collateral damage. Bro, it feels like it sometimes. I recognize the witch's cry during the song. It's the sound that the monkeys in the 2000 dinosaur film for reals check it out. Glad to see y'all back, even for a little bit. Huh? Monkeys Maybe. in the 2000 dinosaur film? What's up, dude? Sam Whitworth as live action. <laughs> Construction standard OSHA corny I know. Ah, uh, okay. Three more days till Star Wars Bounty Hunter remake comes out. Oh shit. I also just learned about Star Wars thirteen thirteen project would have been a great sequel. Yeah. I was really yeah, excited for what that. you paid for with the Acolyte. The biggest problem with Ahsoka now was the rebel, the themes, and characters just not translating to live to live action that well. Thanks for the content. RK Lore, sign me up. Yeah, dude, I think that'd be great. Easily. Easily a 100K sub channel within like probably three months. Yeah, people are really high on Star Wars right now. No, I just think people are like wanting the old stuff right now, if anything. Hello, Theory. In the Acolyte, they were teaching the twins about the power of many. It seemed like a scam because the witches were bested by one Jedi. Yeah, that's that was the freaking humor of it. Yeah. It's like the power of many didn't do shit. <laughs> Made you look bone SC because he's freaky. Mary Watto because he's got some money. Delete Jabba in spite of his wealth because he deserves it. Bob Iger only obeys Larry Fink. Star Wars needs to lay low. Just enjoy old EU good bits. Leslie sensing virgins in the force. Typical of Weinstein's assistant. Oh, fuck, dude. That's rough. Everything I've seen from RLM has been cringeworthy, retarded, or both. Why do they even have fans? Well, they're pretty entertaining at the best. I, I actually, yeah, I was gonna say, I actually really like a lot of Red Letter Media stuff over the years. Um, some of their newer stuff has it does feel like they're like commenting on things I don't know if they normally would, I, would necessarily. Seriously, the the big gap for them is whenever they talk about something they clearly don't care about, but they've got to do it for the algorithm. You can tell they don't give a fuck and they start saying weird things. Yeah, love but, it when they talk about stuff they care about. Yeah, but like as a whole, like, like in the grand scheme of things, they've actually got a lot of really good shit on there over the course yeah. of their. YouTube careers. 
Yeah, I mean, there must be a reason that they have over a million subs, so. Pitch meeting Superman 2 and the Acolyte have the same ending. Well, Superman 2 has the photo of Bill Cosby after the mind wood. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck, mm. dude. Uh, I don't know what he's talking about. What do you mean? Superman 2 is a photo of Bill. Why would I have a photo of Bill Cosby? What's the joke? I don't get it. So, I'm guessing uh, it's probably got something to do with the whole Bill Cosby drama that he was in, you know? But the well, Yeah, but what, what would that have to do with Superman 2? Anyways. Did we watch Hot D? Get away from this shit. What's up, gentlemen? High ground. Take a seat. Dave Filoni is married to a satanic witch, by the way. Oh. Anyone know what's up with KK's contract? If Disney doesn't resign... Bro, she knows way too much dirt on everybody there. And that's why I don't think she's ever going to get fired. She will leave whenever she wants. Literally. Which is probably when all the dudes are gone. Theory, since Filoni helped green light all this garbage, do you think there is any hope for the movies or shows going forwards? Uh, animated shows, yeah. I think there's a lot of hope for that. Um, live action? I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, no. Pretty much no. We, I mean, I feel like we've kind of talked this to death, you know? You don't think he's good for animation? Well, if, if like is if that's specifically regarding your question about or uh, you think that there's like hope in animated stuff and not necessarily live action? Yeah. Um I think there's been some okay stuff live action. I certainly don't like most of Dave Filoni's animated stuff at all either. Um, really? But shit. I feel like we I feel like we've talked this to death in terms of like the Clone Wars and shit. Um but wait, um why am I why am I not cluing in on this? Did have you expressed this before that you don't like his animated stuff? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like on, on on this show, like well, the fuck I, we've had arguments about this and stuff, especially when trying to like convince Mauler that he needs to watch the Clone Wars and things like that. Um, but we've had like a lot of conversations about it. However, um, I think that animated is extremely limited. It, like the start, the storytelling available and and it's limited not because you can't do a bunch of things, but because of the audience that is willing to tune into it. Um, oh, chat saying he has. Do you know what I mean? Of, kind of alarming, man. I'm I'm sorry to detract, but um, lately my memory's been like a, it was yesterday. My mom was saying how she, when she went to Mexico, and I was like, when when did you go to Mexico? And she's like, you got some black about? mold in your house that you've been inhaling. You got to get that shit checked. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little bit alarming, actually, because like I'm not like people are telling me things that like they've blatantly told me about before, like actual events, and I don't remember them. So that's unfortunate. But uh... <laughs> the nice thing is, as like upsetting as it is and fearful as it is, you're probably going to forget about it. Yeah, so, you know. Yeah, probably. Well, exactly. All right. Um, my pitch for a Star Wars comedy. Chongus and Mog, Jedi detectives like Abbott and Costello. Mog is the comedic straight man. Chongus is immune to force push, but otherwise dumb and useless. <laughs> yeah. I like Mog. Yeah, Mog's pretty cool. Just pay good writers and tap into the extended universe as the MCU has done. Imagine a Malgus movie or a trilogy about Bane's rise and fall. Well, fuck. I mean, that'd be awesome. But, you know, I used to be super excited about these kinds of <laughs> um, potential shows. And then I now I'm just like, no, they're just going to fuck it up. Why does OSHA seem like she stinks? Oh, gosh. Y'all going to me Well, okay. let's listen. Dude. Yeah, There's dude. a lot of things to, like, criticize about the Acolyte, especially, like, Amanda Stenberg's acting performance and all this shit. But I would definitely slam both Osha and May, like you know, hundred percent. Just want to make sure Ryan, to compliment her. Ryan supports the show. Mm -hmm. And you're sounding like a separatist. Yeah, I mean, I think Mandela's 
attractive for sure. But uh, I think her acting and her overall, the way she treats fans, I think is just fucking abhorrent. Well, yeah, sure. I can be fucked out of her. That was the line, apparently. Mahler. It was about time, too. Three yeah. hours. Yeah, I feel like you guys are out. You guys are done. Well, I've I got think... to kind of jump out anyway, I was going to say, because I, I don't think there's no way we're going to be able to get through all of these in uh, the next like five, ten minutes or anything. No, we're, we still have another 50 minutes of Super Chats, essentially, like to catch yeah. up on, which they're just going to keep piling in. Well, why not then spend the last few minutes talking about how wonderful it was to have a chat, to touch base, to talk about the state of Star Wars, and also some random stuff on top of that. Yeah, well, it's always great having <laughs> you guys and chilling and hanging out. And... Yeah. Fucking Star Wars is in such a great state, so uh, it's always a pleasure to come and commiserate over its failure. Yeah. Uh, I think the Acolyte was a watershed event for some people uh, in terms of, God, this is the stuff that they're actually approving. You can justify some of this. You can say, oh, well, that's just a miss. The Acolyte was a failure in each and every way. So I'm glad we got to talk about that a little bit today. Yeah, and I look forward to talking about when the Ray movie comes out or the Mandalorian movie comes out or <laughs> and Acolyte season two. season 2 comes out. And all season two will be an interesting one. Yeah, but I think I'm going to like that a lot. So, oh, I don't mean in, that's kind of what I'm getting at. It'll be an interesting one because it, it, we wouldn't expect it to just be garbage, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I think I think it'll be. Good. Yeah, I certainly hope so. Honestly, like I, I would like Andor to get a conclusion that's not crap, you know? I think we're going to get some big cameos in Andor season two. Yeah, of screws and bricks. Mm -hmm. coming back screws. yeah are they flammable though is the question could, we have, good, a, yeah. could we have a sith that's made of bricks could that well is that the, is that the book? Darth Darth Bane, Bane, kind of in a yeah. sense he's got Previous probably has some screws in there as well right oh 100 he's got screws there's yeah. no way it's all wielded welded <laughs> wielded wielded, wielded. <laughs> Chat, do you guys want me, to, do you want me to stay on and continue when the boys dip out? They're probably going to say yes. They probably do. Fuck. I've got like, oh. uh, I can do like five or ten more minutes or whatever. But then I got to bounce too. Okay. I mean, I could always, or I could just return another day and read all the super chats for everyone. Do a square up. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, I know that's what Mahler and uh, Drinker do. So do you guys just have like a, a, like a stream that just goes over all of the soupies? Uh, me and Drinker tend to do the stream. We cover a couple live, and then we do an offline recording so that, you know, no more can come in. So we get them done, goes out, and it's all caught up. Uh, mm. Same for EFAP. And I think Gary does online cat. Does Gary do his, do his online or he offline? He does another stream, typically. Sometimes he does recordings, but sometimes he does a stream. Mm -hmm. I, myself, don't get enough Super Chats to have to worry about things like that. So, you know. Where... Problem. Where does he do those? He just uploads them? Like, yeah. Just uploads the video? Okay. Yeah. Answering super chats. I've never actually done that as like a pre recorded thing. Well, it's, it's mainly just so you don't have, it's not perpetual, right? Because if you keep streaming all of the responses and you get more in, and then, and then you realize you can't even make the things people came to you for. So it's yeah. like, oh shit. Yeah. Because then, then you're behind, and then you need a stream on that too. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. But, um, I'm right, well, I, so out, chat, so. I, I want to chat with the boys behind the scenes. Well, I guess not Mahler, but I want to chat with Ryan behind the scenes. Wow. Um, so I'm probably going to bounce as well, and we're going to end the show. And then I can always do a live stream or something where um, I go over all of them, if you guys so wish. The only issue I know is that people probably have questions for you guys as well. And that's probably the issue here, but um, it is what it is, I suppose. So shall we call it a day? Sounds good. If there's anything super pressing, you can always pass it on for those people yeah. that did super chat direct stuff for us. Yeah, or like Ryan could just hop in the comments one day and be like, hey, answering this question or whatever. This is why this is retarded. Yeah. This is yeah. why Anakin is hotter than Obi-Wan, yeah. Yeah, this <laughs> is why I'd bang Salacious B. Crumb. It's, it's essentially what his answer would be. All right, well, hey, this is fun. Are we going to re reconvene for the Goonies? Skull Maybe. I can't say because I don't know if any of us are going to care or not, but we'll see. Okay. 
All right. It might come and go like a fart in the wind. Yeah. It might. Yeah. It might. It's unfortunate because we won't have any Star Wars till uh, Andor 2, I suppose. Really, in that, in that case. But, um, okay. Well, hey, we love you guys. The boys got to bounce. So uh, we hope you enjoyed the reunion and we'll see you guys in the next one for sure. Bye. Bye.